Hello, everybody. My name is Brent Howlett. I'm a contractor uh, in the heavy civil construction. I was awarded the tender on the first owner that had this property back in 2012. Uh, by the time we uh, got to base asphalt for the first phase of uh, 55 lots, of which 51 are being requested as first phase, uh, he let his job lapse. So my only option at that time was to take over the project so that I wouldn't lose my company as well. So what I've done since that point is I've been working with your staff since the original draft plan approval was rejected because the notice apparently wasn't addressed by the original owner. We've been working for the last two years with staff on the uh, resubmission of the FSR on a system that's already existing. We were close enough to the last portion of phase one that we're relocating uh, an existing sanitary lift station on the right of way at the corner of Simpson Avenue, right at Deku Road. And we've dedicated a block of which the well and the valve chamber are already installed at eight meters deep. So uh, what has to be completed and a uh, clarification to Ms. Van Dalen is <clears throat> we've requested for draft plan approval and registration of phase one with draft plan conditions to complete uh, the pump station, as well as uh, an external drain, which picks up water from the old car dealer on Highway uh, 24 and transmits through phase two, which is not done yet, which is still raw land. The infrastructure has been constructed so that everything is in place for all of these things to be completed. We also have the uh, street lighting plan and the registration with what was originally Norfolk Hydro. The design is already complete and ready to be installed. So we're at a situation where we just need approval to proceed. Uh, the plan is to complete phase 155 and hopefully start phase two within the same amount of time. So just to clarify, if you have any questions, I'd be very glad to answer. Councillor Hoffman. Thank you, Mayor Chuck. Uh, through you to um, the developer. Uh, could you tell me the price point of these homes? I would think that uh, anybody in the right mind would probably start around 475,000 to 595. They're all 93 single family lots. They vary in size from 60 feet down to 45. Um, again, so question being, um, is there an opportunity to inject some uh, more reasonably priced for first time home buyers? I believe uh, phase two could be adjusted to that purpose. Phase one right now, the 55 lots that are existing are between 60 and 45, and they okay. would remain the same because it's already built. Okay, so would that be something that you may consider? I'm considering uh, all my options at this point. I'm, like I said, you're a heavy civil contractor, so I'm either going to sell the lots to a builder mm -hmm. or I'm going to work with a builder to build the lots. And yes, I would imagine that would be on their agenda. Okay, because it's certainly on the agenda of council and uh, a lot of residents in Norfolk County. Yeah, so. certainly phase two can be looked at for semi-detached housing. You could look at townhouse blocks as well. That, that's all in, in the geometry that's proposed. It would just be simply adding a couple more service leads and laterals and water services. Further questions for Councillor Rabbits? Thank you, Madam Mayor. Through you uh, to Mr. Howlett, thank you for uh, coming before us today with this application. Uh, my question, again, is uh, pertaining to the roads here. So uh, it looks like we're keeping Bird Street, um, but we're going to be renaming Shaw Street to Butternut Drive, and Sid Street's going to be renamed to Tulip Crescent. And am I to understand um, that we are keeping that same road uh, that allows you access into there? We're just renaming them? That's correct. Uh, and my follow-up question to you uh, is a totally separate topic. Um, just because people like to be informed about knowing what's going on in their backyard, and that's why I'm asking the questions about the streets. Some of them will be renamed. Um, my question about uh, our staff's recommendations, there's, a, there's quite a lengthy, you know, there's 48 um, and further that and recommendations in here. Uh, with our staff's recommendations, was there anything specifically that you objected to or you felt was missing from our staff's recommendation? Appreciating it is a lengthy report. We're talking about 22 pages. DCS 19-85, but I want to provide you an opportunity just if you objected to any of the recommendations therein so we could uh, have an informed debate. The only uh, issue that I would like uh, addressed is that we're looking for approval today of phase one to be able to register phase one, having the draft plan conditions understood that need to be completed. Uh, the, the biggest issue outstanding is going to be the completion of the external drain pipe for the storm sewer that will carry the overflow from phase two into uh, the Lynn River. Right now, the uh, pond has been retrofitted so that any storage of any excess flow of water for phase one is captured and kept within the site. So there's no stormwater issues whatsoever. That's also in the functional services report that uh, we provided to the county. So going forward, uh, the only clarification that I would like uh, with the staff is that you understand that we're looking for proceeding with phase one and developing phase two right after. 
and I've been working in concert with your staff for the last two years. So. Further questions from councillors? Councillor Taylor. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, assuming phase one is approved tonight, when can you start? Well, that would allow me to get the hydro, gas, and street lighting started right away, and the pump station completed. Perfect. Yes, I'm very excited for this. I have walked and driven past the Dream Villa sign and you are not the only for one. a long time now, so I'm really excited to see this. Councillor Columbus. Mayor, where do you generally work out of, uh, you worked in other municipalities? I, I have, sir. Um, I'm based out of Burlington, and I've worked as far north as Barrie, as far east as Oshawa, as far north as Collingwood, Owen Sound, and across to London. So I've been doing this for 30 years. Great. Thank you. Any further questions from councillors? Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Is there, okay. Is there anyone else that wishes to speak in favor of the application? Is there anyone that wishes to speak in general or, or in opposition to the application? You could have a verbal motion from uh, councillors to close public meeting, Councillor Taylor and Councillor Rabbits. All those in favor? And that's carried. Um, following on Councillor Huffman's point, so I guess I have, I'm a little bit frustrated because we use our official plan to, in my view, improperly regulate in certain situations. We seem to have on an almost bi-weekly basis official plan amendments coming forward for changes in you know maximum heights and so on that I'm not sure when the plan was just recently developed it seems to me we should be trying to follow the plan a lot of work went into it but what's not in the official plan and we could be using in a situation like this is inclusionary zoning and I'm just wondering what steps we have taken to ensure that in developments, I believe the legislation is when they're, you're creating a development of 10 or more homes, that there is that requirement either within that development itself or that they construct units that meet that requirement elsewhere. What kind of work we've done in that regard? Uh, through you, Madam Mayor. Um, absolutely. Uh, in terms of... Uh, looking at um, additional housing opportunities, different housing stock uh, options for more affordable type units. Um, it is something that we, we do try to encourage. Uh, this property was a bit of a unique situation in the fact that they had uh, draft approvals. There was some infrastructure uh, previously installed. So trying to work with the developer in, in terms of getting this development forward. Um, with it, there will still be the opportunity for secondary suites um, uh, internally currently um, and hopefully and in the fall we'll be bringing uh, forward some new regulations and policies surrounding um, the opportunity for um, accessory or secondary suites in uh, accessory buildings or uh, in standalone structures uh, in follow-up to Stephen's report uh, from the last council meeting regarding tiny house opportunities. So there will be some of that that's recognized through this subdivision um, and, and moving forward with other subdivisions, it is something that we would try and, and advocate for maybe a little bit more. Um, but given the history and the circumstances with, uh, with this subdivision, we were just trying to, to work with uh, Mr. Howlett to, to get everything in place because there was already a uh, significant investment in terms of the infrastructure that was designed uh, to accommodate the single detached lot fabric that uh, is before you today. Okay, so I think though, I'm, I'm t something a little bit different I love the tiny homes, but I think that I don't want to see them used in excess either. Inclusionary zoning is, is different where it's actually some housing stock, not secondary units, but actual housing stock that is affordable housing. Um, and so I think the first stage for a municipality to be able to include that in the official plan is that we have to do what's called an assessment report, and that assessment report needs to be made publicly um, available. And so I'm just wondering... Uh, if we were to approve this today, when is the second phase coming forward? Uh, through you, Madam Mayor, that would be uh, kind of uh, as quick as Mr. Howlett would like to, to see it come forward. Uh, there, with that, uh, there would be a zoning amendment that would be required because the property is currently zoned R1A, but it's something that we're happy to, uh, to, to look at in more details and work with Mr. Howlett on uh, in terms of moving forward. 
I guess the challenge is I like Councillor Hoffman's point today. I just, I'm not sure legally if we can make a requirement like that without having gone through these official plan, the assessment reports and all the other steps. So I think we need to jump on it now so that we're ahead for future. Um, so maybe somebody else might like to include that as a motion after this report. <laughs> Um, so, would somebody like to move the staff recommendation or propose an alternative? Councillor Rabbits. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Through you, I'd like to move uh, staff's recommendation um, with the addition um, that we are approving phase one of the project. I believe we heard that is 55 um, units or parcels. Um, whatever the correct verbiage is there, I'd like that included uh, in, in the recommendation. <laughs> Seconder, Councillor Taylor, any further discussion? Uh, friendly amendment that additionally we would, uh, I don't know how I want to go about wording this, um, ask that staff um, work with Mr. Howlett to get out ahead of the game and ensure we're addressing. I'm thinking maybe let's just do the, the recommendation on the, the, this issue itself and then if we want to make a motion to um, have staff uh, investigate um, how we go about including uh, uh, inclusionary zoning in our official plan as well as taking the necessary steps to prepare an assessment report. So we'll deal with the first part that was, yes sir. Perfect. Um, okay, so moved by Councillor Rabbit, seconded by Councillor Taylor. All those in favor? And that's carried. Did you want to try that again, Councillor Martin? I was making notes. Um, I'd like to make a motion that staff work with uh, Mr. Howlett moving forward for phase two of the development to discuss the necessary steps for an inclusionary plan. And that's where my note stops, Mayor Chop. <coughs> I guess I think it's, it's something along the lines of that staff be directed to um, in, investigate uh, including inclusionary zoning in our official plan and taking the necessary steps to begin preparing an assessment report uh, as part of that requirement. Is there a seconder for Councillor Martin's motion? Councillor Taylor or Rabbits? All those in favor? Carried. Okay, next. And so I guess just to add a final thing to that, the idea would be that this would come back before uh, kind of we're, we're seeing some other developments like this come forward. So I think there's an imperativeness to get on this. Um, Next is staff report DCS 19-87, uh, Harbor Heights development and agent JH uh, Cahoon Engineering has put forth the application affecting the lands described as one Grand Street, also known as lots three, four, five, six, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, and parts of lots one, two, and 80, block 75A, and parts of lots four, five, and six, block 75, register plan 207 in the town of Port Dover in Norfolk County. I'd now like to open the meeting on staff report DCS 19-8. And Shanna, is that you again? Thank you, Mayor Chop. Um, <clears throat> so this application is a part lot control application. Uh, it is kind of in opposition uh, to what you seen earlier with the deeming bylaw. Uh, what this uh, application does is uh, essentially removes the lots of that are, are created there um, so that the development can, can proceed. And once the units are constructed, uh, part lot a is applied back on and uh, the individual lots are created once, they once the, 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 the location is known. Um, it allows uh, townhouses uh, to be constructed uh, and then the lot lines dropped back in based on the location of the common walls. Um, so that uh, as opposed to a plan of subdivision, where you have the lots created already and they're trying to, to make it fit within those lot lines um, can be a bit of a, a surveying nightmare uh, to try and place those walls. So what this does is it removes that, that part lot 
component to it until construction and then the lot lines are placed back on so the units can then be sold as freehold uh, townhouse uh, residential opportunities. Um, based on, on that, uh, staff are recommending uh, support uh, to continue to facilitate the residential development and I uh, thank you for your time today. Uh, questions from councillors? I'm kind of a little confused myself actually by this one. Could you just kind of go through that again? Uh, three you mayor top. So with a part lot control, and I, I what happens is instead of the lots being created through a plan of subdivision where they're registered as individual parcels, what happens is the townhouses are constructed as a block on the on the lands, and then they're surveyed to know where the common walls are in between each of the units. And once that is known, uh, that survey plan uh, then gets registered and the part lot control applies back on. Um, so by putting that part lot back onto the, the subject lands um, at the end of the, the, the time, that's where the lots are created from. So it's kind of taking a little bit of a backward approach um, to creating those lots. Uh, it removes the block as itself, so it stands as a, an individual block right now. The units are put in, the, the boundaries are, are identified so that the units can then be sold individually. And, and it's, a, it's a bit of a convoluted process. And what was the purpose of doing it this way to begin with? Um, it's most of the time you'll find that with some of the larger uh, con townhouses like this um, because it's hard to place the walls, if you create the lots ahead of time, it's hard to be precise when they're pouring the concrete. Um, so what this does is it allows them to do the construction and then put the lots back in place. Okay. Any further questions for councillors? Is the agent or our applicant in attendance? Okay, does anyone wish to speak in favor of the application? Does anyone wish to speak in general or in opposition to the application? Could have a verbal motion to close the public meeting. Councillor Taylor, seconded by Councillor Columbus. All those in favor? It's carried. Does somebody wish to move the staff recommendation or propose an alternative? Councillor Columbus is moving the staff recommendation, seconded by Councillor Michelli. All those in favor? And that's carried. And finally, the staff report of the night. <laughs> that's that, uh, Shannon, will you be presenting the report? Thank you, uh, Council. Um, so this report and bylaw is uh, in follow-up to Council direction and the January uh, 2019 report. Uh, the amendments uh, proposed uh, include uh, amendments to the Norfolk County Zoning Bylaw, as well as the, uh, an amendment to the Animal uh, Care and Control Bylaw. So the proposed amendments uh, to the Zoning Bylaw include uh, definitions, uh, maximum number of uh, animals permitted, and setback uh, provisions uh, for the hen um, enclosure and run. The uh, zoning bylaw and the animal care and control bylaw uh, would run together uh, to help uh, apply the applicable provisions, and um, which leads into the animal care and control amendment as well. Um, which uh, has a, a number of similar type amendments that are proposed to it um, and also uh, goes a little bit further in terms of um, the handling of the animals in particular, um, which is different from the zoning bylaw uh, amendments that are proposed. So as part of the amendment and the public process, uh, public comments were received uh, both in support of uh, permissive uh, allowing um, the housing of urban chickens, as well as in opposition uh, to the proposal. 
Uh, it is also noted that a petition uh, from the Pine Ridge subdivision uh, was received in objection uh, to the proposed amendments. Based on the comments received, uh, review uh, of the, uh, the proposed amendments uh, and council's direction, staff are recommending support uh, of the uh, proposed amendments to the Norfolk County Zoning Bylaw as well as the Norfolk County Animal Care and Control Bylaw. And I am happy to uh, try and answer any questions that you might have. Thank you. Questions from councillors? Councillor Columbus. On page uh, two of the report, interdepartmental implications uh, talks about the bylaw enforcement resources to assist potential complaints regarding the backyard hens not currently available. Mr. Enslin, uh, how do you expect to handle that? Like, I, I take it if somebody calls in with a complaint, you will be sending somebody out, will you not, to see that the measurements are far enough from the side yard and you know, built properly? Through you, Madam Mayor, that's exactly right. Uh, when we get a response or a request for a service or a complaint, and uh, staff will be responding on, uh, on a normal basis. So, so you'll just have to crowd that into your normal work? Into day. other matters that we receive, yes. Thank you. Further questions? Council Martin. I discussed this a little bit earlier and thought that maybe it was a bit of a makeshift project, but I wonder what Mr. Enslin's comments are on doing just that, visiting a, visiting a home to measure a coop size. When Is there some type of uh, system that could be put in place that's not creating additional workforce staff where um, we can ensure that size prior to construction in an effort to kind of divert some bylaw um, resources to this or no would you prefer addressing them as as needed through you madam mayor um, it, it will be a bylaw response uh, with regards to the complaint uh, to look at there's no permit requirements for these uh, coops so there's no way to review any kind of proposal ahead of time so uh, it's basically the owner will comply with the bylaw, uh, be informed of what the bylaw is, and uh, we may or may not get a complaint. We may not hear anything. Uh, if we do get a complaint, we'll respond. But it's strictly bylaw enforcement. Uh, there's no building enforcement because it doesn't meet the requirements for building permit. Further questions from councillors? Okay, there isn't an application before council, so I think at this point we'll just open up the floor to um, whoever would like to speak on the matter. Handy. So Andrew Moore, 52 Poplar Street. Uh, good afternoon, Mayor Trop and Councillors. Today I want to keep my speech simple, but re-go over some of the big points I've talked about. Backyard hens are already allowed in many places throughout Ontario. Some of these places include Kingston, Brampton, Niagara, Caledon, Guelph, Kitchener, Newmarket, Windsor, and Toronto. Niagara and Guelph have both allowed hens for more than 20 years. And if these places had the issues you've heard about before, smell, noise, predators, and disease, they definitely would not continue to allow them. A province other than Ontario, Quebec, actually allows 40 places to raise chickens. And all these places aren't overwhelmed with the scent or noise of hens and don't have coyotes roaming their streets. When you have 10,000 chickens in a barn, Yes, they will smell, and yes, they will be loud, but so would any animal when you have 10,000 of them in a small space. When you only have four hens, they make little to no noise and don't smell. Many of these issues simply aren't true and won't happen with the new bylaw you have rewritten and approved. The Duck Park or the Linwood and Grant Anderson Parks are great examples to use. Even with the hundreds of ducks and geese that live at these parks, you can't smell their poop and coyotes aren't coming into town because of the ducks and geese. Why would predators come for my four chickens enclosed in a coop, but not for hundreds of ducks and geese that are in the open? Chickens aren't only great pets and forms of entertainment, but they also lay fresh, healthy eggs. Because the hens have a variety in their diet, their eggs are much better for you than store-bought eggs. Some more benefits to raising your own hens include pest and weed control, less food wasted, cruelty-free, and the educational value. And then here with me today, over the past few days, I've started a petition and collected the name, address, and signature from different Norfolk residents 
The petition reads, Norfolk residents in favor of backyard chickens and has almost 70 signatures. The petition has a variety of people from Simcoe, Port Dover, Victoria, Delhi, and Waterford, and I would like to submit that, have it here. And with that, I hope you guys will vote in favor of the rewritten bylaw allowing hens. With the capital of Ontario allowing hens, it's time Ontario's garden does too. Thank you. Thank you. Does anyone else wish to speak in favor of the application? Oh, no, well, and, and just however you like. <laughs> Thanks, Andy. Whoops. Madam Mayor and Councillors, uh, I would like to speak on my experience with hens and chickens next door for over 20 years. I have lived on South Drive for 43 years. Unfortunately, we had a neighbor who liked to raise chickens, rabbits, five dogs, a goat. Um, during this period, I got the town involved, by law enforcement, humane society, and various other people in the community to help me rid next door's farm. Because of what they had and the chicken feed that they had, we ended up with rats, on not only in their backyard, but in our backyard. We fought it. By law enforcement was there at least two or three times to go against it. And the latest time they were there, they told me, as long as they have chicken feed, you will have rats. I am totally opposed to this. I have to be honest that if you had been in my situation for over 20 years, you would see my point. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Oh, can we get your name for the record? Yes, I'm sorry. My name is Pat Cox, C-O-X. And you live at? Pardon? Senior address? Oh, my address is 299 South Drive, Simcoe. Just look for the farm. Just, well, actually, the gentleman died and moved away, so it's not bad now. Okay. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thanks for coming. Does anyone else wish to speak? Mayor and Council, my name is Garfield Eaton. I'm from uh, Port Rowan. I live at 80 Upper Canada Drive. Your record tonight is not complete. I have a letter into Council on this issue. You only have page one. I don't know where page two is. I'm also here to speak on behalf of the villages of Long Point Bay. They submitted a letter to council representing 323 homes in the town of Port Rowan and over 500 people. And their letter and their position was that they were opposed to having chickens in the villages of Long Point Bay. And they had very many reasons for that request. This county council allowed the development of a community on a very tight, restricted footprint. The impact of what you're proposing to allow can be very dramatic in a community like that. My understanding was that the councillor for Ward 1 was going to brief you on this this evening. I sat back, I didn't hear that. Can you tell me if you received the letter? From the village I, all of council did receive your letter from long point bay yes and, and there's been so many communications on the chickens that they've all come in at different times okay. over the last several months so they might not be in the council package now but everybody has definitely received did you received my second page of my letter it, okay it's not really a q a period but councillor michelle did you want to say something thank you madam mayor um to uh, Mr. Eaton, uh, <clears throat> Mr. Eaton, I, I received your letter uh, originally, and I do know that there was uh, some confusion or miscommunication. Uh, apparently, I was the only councillor who received that original letter. Uh, no other members of council re council received it. Okay. Um, I fully intend, and I have it ready in my hand, the original letter, and I fully intend to comment on it later. So it's not like I didn't do anything. I have to do things in order. And uh, everybody does but, have page two. It's on the other side of the page that you received on your blog. Okay. Um, so anyway, I just want to... Councilor Michelli, though, everybody did receive that letter. Of that, I'm sure. It was on the, the main email, because I distinctly recall it as well. Okay. So my full letter has been received by council. Yes. Okay. Thank you very much. 
Uh, I want to make one comment about your bylaw that's being proposed. I don't think there's been a real deep thought and research put into the content of your bylaw. There's a lot of really good information out there for communities and organizations that have started uh, engaging on the whole process of trying urban chickens. And there's a lot of recommendations that direct you, that would help you what you should do to avoid problems. None of this I've seen considered in your process. And it worries me greatly as a resident of this county. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Anyone else? Hi, uh, my name is Leslie Wilson. I'm at uh, 10 Poplar Street and I just know over the past couple of years there have been a lot of discussion back and forth. I know a lot of work has gone into the research behind this and um, as a taxpayer I just like to say I, I think that with the bylaw, I'm not familiar with other bylaws, that it does have a bit of, I uh, have a restriction. People would have to follow the rules of the bylaw and if um, I can't see everybody and their aunt getting hens because <laughs> I just it's a lot of work and people the only people that would actually do that are people that are interested in actually having the hens having their own eggs and as a like I said a taxpayer um, if this doesn't go through it kind of maybe worries me a little bit of what other things can be um, as I'm on my own private property what can be stopped from having happen if I wanted to do something else we know there are rules for things. We know it's not just a free-for-all kind of thing. Um, it just kind of comes into mind that if this doesn't go through and, again, like something else was, was come, comes up that somebody might want to do on their own property and it's not um, allowed, it kind of rubs me the wrong way any pers anyway, personally. So I just think it was um, well thought out and uh, I'm for the chickens because, again, I don't think um, there are going to be a lot of them and I think the people who do it will take care of them so anyway thank, thank you. you anyone else my name is John Harris I live on 175 Maple Street here in Simcoe my opinion about backyard chickens is I don't care either way do it or don't do it we have bridges that need to be repaired we have roads that need to be repaired. We have downtowns, we have an opioid crisis, we have a housing crisis. We have bigger issues, and all due respect to Mr. Moore and the work that he has done, I respect anyone who wants to bring an initiative. Part of the problem here is process, I think, and it's part of what's laid out before us, but we've talked about this for a long time. We are still waiting for the downtown action group. We're waiting desperately to get to that hard work that will bring economic vitality to the core. Chickens are important. Do it. Don't do it. Unfortunately, though, John, you're here to speak about the chickens. For I know. Or against. Do it. Not the rest of it. Do it or don't do it, but we got to get on to other things. Mayor Chop and Council, my name is Rick Daudry. I moved down here from mid Oxford County about 10 years ago. I've been involved in these pet and poultry functions since 1985. I do not have chickens, but I have a lot of friends who do, who live in towns, in villages, in rural properties. So many of the issues that are raised against are off the internet. It's warning everybody about everything. When it comes down to a rural community, or it comes down to the Simcoe Fair and you see the kids in there with their rabbits, we're talking about a, a, a fair that's based on a rural situation, on an agricultural situation. You're going to teach these kids responsibility and care. That's, to me, that's the bottom line. I like working with kids. I always have in service club business. As I say, I've been in this a long time. And a lot of what we're hearing is fear-mongering. I'm not familiar with it. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Councillor Van Passen. 
Um, if I could just ask the question, I don't think we're here to decide whether or not we're going to allow chickens. That was decided in December. What we're here for is the rules on how you get to keep the chickens. Like, you know, I still think it's a bad idea to have chickens, but that's already been decided. We've been there. Now we're looking at the rules, how far away you've got to be from the neighbor, what kind of accommodations your chickens have to have. That's what we're discussing tonight, unless I'm mistaken somehow. No, I would agree myself. I mean, if, if this wasn't passed this evening, I think it was an enormous waste of time on staff's part for us to send them back to draft a bylaw and come back to council. Um, and uh, to Mr. Harris's point, I think that, yes, we do have more important things to get onto. And so, yes, this would have been a waste of time, this exercise. At the end of the day, though, we had to get to this point to be able to approve the bylaw, something that's been going on since 2012, of which most of the councillors sitting around this table weren't here from when this process started. So. But in keeping with the public meeting, is there anyone else that wishes to speak? Okay, if I could have a verbal motion that to close public meeting, Councillor Rabbit, seconded by Councillor Taylor. All those in favor? Okay, and any further discussion or questions from councillors? Councillor Van Passen. Yes, thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, the recommendation that the staff's looking for is uh, that this report be approved, but in our council agenda when we put those hats back on there are two bylaws that are proposed to be changed to accommodate these changes and we won't be doing that with that till later and i think there's some errors in those but by that time our planning staff won't be here so what what's the process that we uh like you know we could approve this report but then we might could we approve it with the changes there it's and i believe in regard some of the definitions yeah. aren't lining up in the report and so on yeah, that's one thing. would you like to go through what the well but we can't do that because that's in a, a different agenda right I think just in the interest of moving the chickens along perhaps we could articulate what the concerns are within the report um, if council was comfortable with that okay council Councilor Michelli Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, I, I do want to suggest or ask if uh, Council would consider um, a slight amendment to, uh, to this chicken bylaw uh, that would be able to exempt uh, one particular community uh, from the, uh, the chicken bylaw. Um, and I, I'm speaking on behalf of the uh, members of the villages of Long Point in Port Rowan. Um, and, uh, and you have the correspondence now, I understand, in front of you uh, with, uh, with Council's indulgence. I just want to just point out a couple of items. I'm, I'm going to refer to, uh, there are five points that are, that are made by the President of the uh, Long Point um, uh, Villages uh, Association. And uh, I, I want to focus on point number one first. Um, when, when that development was put together uh, in the past, uh, it was done so um, with uh, a series of, of um, uh, regulations and restrictions that were imposed by, by Norfolk County on the developer. Then uh, you can read them there, but um, they are uh, regarding you know, the reduced side yard setbacks, uh, reduced road widths, uh, all of those types of things that um, Make, make the villages of Long Point Bay a little bit of a unique community uh, compared to any of the other developments that we have in Norfolk County. Uh, that, that's one thing I just want Council to consider. Also, the, uh, the third part is that in that development, they do not allow fences. And so uh, without fencing, uh, I do think that there is a greater risk of, of conflict between neighbors if, uh, if people have chickens and the chickens uh, you know, are allowed to um, roam freely in some cases, whether they should be or not, yeah, but I mean the possibility there would exist. Um, neighbors have no fencing to protect them in that area, and I'm, I'm afraid that that could create some conflict between neighbors. Um, third point is, um, and council may recall that uh, in our council and committee meeting last week, that those same villages of Long Point Bay were identified by staff as a what appeared to be a model tiny homes community, uh, which I believe uh, puts them in a, a slightly different category, again, 
than any other development or community that we have in Norfolk County. And so I am wondering if, uh, and, I, and I just couldn't help but notice that uh, in the staff report when uh, the objections were listed, um, one of the things that was, that was not listed there was the fact that um, the, uh, the, these items I'm bringing up here were not on that list. And I don't know if that was just a product of council or staff not receiving this communication in time or not. Uh, and I, I couldn't help but notice um, in, uh, in Andrew Moore's um, remarks, uh, he has a petition uh, that is signed by uh, vending people from Norfolk County. I noticed that uh, no one from Ward 1 or Port Rowan was mentioned in this list of people around that petition. So uh, with, with all of those things in mind, I am, I'm requesting Council consider uh, exempting the villages of Long Point Bay uh, in Port Rowan from the chicken bylaw. Thank you. Councillor Hoffman. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Through you too. I actually, I just want to ask a question of Councillor Michelli. Would this not be something that could be addressed in terms of... Um, I'm going to get the wording wrong, but I see this as kind of almost like a co-op kind of thing. Could that not be something that would be in their... Um, their condominium rules? Pardon? Their condominium rules? I yeah. Think. Wouldn't that be something that would be addressed? I just don't think that it's appropriate that we would totally um, excuse one group. I can see definitely support why they don't want to have them, but I would think that there would be another way that we would go about that to maintain our... Um, everyone's rights. That's Marshall. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, with your permission, I'm going to let Mr. Eaton speak to that. I think he would like I, to. I think we're going to just stick with the discussion with right. Council here. Okay, so uh, I'm, uh, I'm not clear then if I'm referring to what Councillor Huffman is asking. Um, if she is asking if this is something that the, um, the Residents Association would be able to, to do well, that was my, my sense in the very beginning, uh, that this was um, part of the, uh, you know, the, the agreement that you have when you purchase property in, in that development. But I, and I'm not clear if it is or not, um, that would certainly go a long way to solving this problem. And I recognize, by the way, uh, the problem with exempting one community is that then we'll have the lineup of other communities asking for exemptions. And I, because I, I, I agree with uh, the woman who spoke earlier, I, I, I'll be surprised, and, and I could be wrong, but I'll be surprised if, if everybody, as I think she said, if everybody and their aunt is going to have chickens. I also recognize what uh, Mrs. Cox said earlier, that unfortunately sometimes you get the bad luck of being beside the bad chicken owner and uh, I hope that that will be addressed with a very strict and rigid enforcement of our new bylaws as they are laid out in, in this uh, report. Thank you. I have a question for you, actually, Councillor Michelli. Are dogs and cats allowed in those backyards with no fences? Madam Mayor, um, I have to say <laughs> they are, um, but you know, I have not, and I've been out there a lot of times, I, I do not recall seeing a single dog or cat running loose anywhere. And, and I'm not saying that there aren't one Well, or I just two. want to come back to that because yes. you understand in the bylaw, the chickens are in a coop. They're not free range they, chickens and they across. They can't get out of the coop and, and all those things. I just, I just am so trying could a dog. to anticipate how people think, you know, oh, I'll give them a little bit of extra room. And, but I, and I concede that, okay? I mean, it just seems to me every dog and cat in the villages is in their house. Uh, I, I've never seen them outside, I gotta say. Anyway, but I certainly take your point, thank you. Um, I'm just, I just wanna make one other point on kind of something that you said, just to sort of rebuttal that in terms of tiny homes. I actually would probably wager that most people that support uh, tiny homes probably support backyard chickens, just a guess. Yes, thank you, Madam Mayor. With respect, that is, that's conjecture on your part okay, and speculation. I, just a thank, guess. Thank you. <laughs> Councillor Van Basten. Would it be possible to ask staff whether that particular development is a condominium development or whether it is a regular subdivision? Because I think 
Councilor Michelli has hit their, their, or found the solution. If it's a condominium development, they can change their bylaws to not allow it. If it's a subdivision, then it would have to be the county. Uh, through you, Madam Mayor, um, the property was developed as a plan of subdivision. Um, the individual lots are, are freehold uh, opportunities. Um, I'm not sure if there's an additional home, home excuse me, homeowners association on on top of that 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 the uh, properties would buy into. Um, but in terms of it being a condominium corporation, it's not set up that way. I think the challenge is once you start allowing for one then it starts becoming now a regular issue. Councillor Columbus. Thank you, Madam Mayor. With respect to Councillor Michelli's suggestion on the village's long point, that there are likely many, many other lots just as the same size or smaller even than what we're dealing with villages along point. So I can't see how you can exempt them and not exempt all the other lots that are the same size. The clerk has a couple points to make on this issue. Uh, just, just through you, uh, Mayor Chop. The the one issue that we have is it's it's I, I'd hate to say it's more difficult, but it is more difficult to change a zoning bylaw. Um, we have to include mapping. We have to include uh, so so if you get into to saying that this zone is going to apply and this zone isn't, we aren't approving it today. Is 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 what's happening. Um, so we'll we'll be dealing with that in August or September. Um, so if people wanted to get these set up over the summer, you're, that, that wouldn't be happening if we do that, but that's an option for council. Um, it's easier to change the enforcement <coughs> one as long as we're very specific in what exact amendments have because we can, I can scratch off and, and write on the bylaw tonight and we'll print it up nicer for tomorrow, but it'll be signed and official at the end of the meeting. But we can't, we can't draw a map with uh, this one property circled this evening. Councillor Van Passen. Yeah, thank you, Madam Mayor. If I look in our package here, um, there's a, a petition from some neighbors at 46, Angler 45, Angler 72, 38, 58, 58, 86. Oh, we must turn the corner. We're on Colby now. I think there's another neighborhood. Uh, Colby, 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 Colby. Oh, we're to uh, Hurley Court. I think there's another neighborhood in Norfolk County that probably is not uh, wanting to have backyard chickens as well. And I think one of our counselors already mentioned when you open the door, then you got to let everybody in. So uh, um, I'm not sure what we, uh, whether we could even uh, do that without reviewing the whole situation again, which I don't want to do. I agree. I think it's time to move on. The bylaw is there with Councilor Rabbits. Uh, thank you. Uh, Mayor Chop, and through you, I think at this juncture in time, I, I've heard enough of the discourse. We could always uh, uh, debate some more. I'm willing to move staff's recommendation um, with the restrictions that's starting on page 65 and moving into uh, page 66 of our agenda, and I would be looking for a seconder. I think just what Councillor Van Passen was pointing out earlier, and we're just on a procedural issue, if everybody is okay that we do, there's a couple of, there's just a couple of errors in the bylaw itself in terms of the definitions just to ensure consistency so we don't run into future problems. As in kind of a maximum of four chickens per property as opposed to, you know, it's per owner, but then an owner is defined differently throughout the bylaw. So um, maybe Councillor Van Passen would like to go through the corrections. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, if we go back to our council agenda, uh, the bylaw 21967, the animal care and control bylaw, um, uh, it would be two page 60, 265, and then uh, on the second page, on page 266, article 1.2.1, .1, it defines what an owner is. So the owner is the person who owns the chickens. But then when we go to page 267, section 6.9.3, tenants must obtain written consent from the owner to keep backyard hens on the owner's property. So now we're using the word owner as the owner of the property, and you can't define one word to mean something and then use it for two or three different things. So 
um, you got to find a new name for the owner of the chickens. And I'd also suggest that 6.9.2, that no owner is permitted to keep more than four backyard hens. If I'm the owner of four chickens and I have four backyard hens, my wife is an owner of four more chickens, so she's got four more backyard hens. My son is the owner of four more chickens. Pretty soon I got 20 chickens in my backyard. It should be limited to, I think the intent was to limit it to four per property, and I don't think that wording captures it. We go to 6.9.5. Um, they must be provided with access to food and water. Such feed and water shall be kept in a solid tamper-proof containers outside the hen enclosure. Well, what is a hen enclosure? We define what a hen coop is, we define what a hen run is, but now all of a sudden we have a hen enclosure and we have no idea what that is. 6.9.6, um, uh, just as a bit of information, uh, the chicken manure that's supposed to be disposed of properly uh, Chicken manure weighs about 25 pounds a cubic foot. When it's dry, when it's wet, it weighs more than that. 2.8 cubic feet is going to weigh uh, about 70 pounds. That's going to be a heck of a bag to cart around. And uh, uh, so, what's the change you would like to see there? But I, I'd still like to know what the, the disposed of properly. It is a better version than the last one where it said to be disposed in the country. And I also have a question on the zoning bylaw. 47Z 2019, it's on page 321 of the agenda, 3.18.3 uh, uh, speaks about where the, the hen coops and hen runs get to be, that they got to be three meters from, an in, from a side lot line, three meters from a rear lot line, three meters from abutting dwellings. But is, uh, there's a difference on exterior lots, right? That, you, you, you've got a, a corner lot, you don't want the chicken coop out three meters from the lot line when there's 20 meters of side yard, right? You, the intent, I think we, we do this with other situations where an exterior lot line, um, they have different rules for what you can plunk out in that outside corner. Uh, three, Madam Mayor, it was my understanding that the side, so the three meters would be measured from whatever the that side required lot line would be. Um, so it, it is different when you're, you're dealing with the structures. Um, the structures do have uh, p potential for additional setbacks. And then the three meters would be measured from whatever the side lot line is. Okay, so it is, they, they, if they have the quarter lot, it's not gonna be sitting out next three meters from the road. It's gonna be tucked in behind somewhere. Through you, Madam Mayor. Uh, just to further that, uh, the, uh, the zoning bylaw setbacks for structures would still apply. So as the coop is a structure, even though you don't need a building permit for it, it's still a structure under the bylaw and would be subject to the other setback requirements for any structure. Okay, um, is there any suggestions you have, Councillor Van Passen, for the change? I think they have all of them, except for maybe the manure situation, how you would like that reworded. So could we, Councillor Michelli. Thank you, Madam Mayor. I'm just a question for Councillor Van Passen. Is, is it the word properly that you're having trouble with for the manure? Um, properly, but I think we, maybe a discussion should to play, take place about what is properly. I think we had a complaint properly in one person's mm -hmm. mind means driving down the back road to Charlotteville and dumping it in the ditch. Uh, I'd suggest maybe we look into whether that would be allowed in with our leaf recycling at the recycling plant to compost it, you know, look at some options that we can provide it. I don't think we can write that in the bylaw, but we could sort of make suggestions somehow through our media team. 
team, right? So. Uh, Madam Mayor, well, thank you very much, uh, Councillor Van Passen. That, that was my problem with the word properly also. Uh, it's going to mean something different to everybody in the room. So uh, I think maybe we just need to have, if even staff can just adjust that word so it's a little more specific. Councillor Hoffman. Thank you, Mayor Chop. Through you to staff, um, I know that currently they, the uh, chickens, they were allowed in hamlets, and that was a pilot project per se. But I do recall that there was no monitoring on that. My question is, how were the residents who had uh, the chickens in hamlets, how were they disposing of the chicken manure? What was in place for that? Andy, do you have any suggestions? No? In all your research? Okay. How about the other gentleman that seemed to know a lot of people? Yes, sir. Suggestions on disposing of manure. That's what we're looking for right now. You had your opportunity before. On manure? we had that question answered by staff that's why we stopped they said that you were not we, we did have that answered okay thank you okay so the clerk suggested that we could um, approve the changes we'll still deal with the bylaw later in the meeting but we could vote on the changes as recommended by Councillor Van Passen so um, I'm assuming we don't need to read those out again. Everybody's understood those changes, and staff, Fritz, you've got those. Uh, and so we'll trust that they'll make those those changes moving forward. Um, so if there's a seconder for Councillor Van Passen's motion. Just in the, the manner that I've tried to capture it um, is uh, it, rather than get into splitting out the owners, I've said that the defini definition of owner be amended to add, in quotes, no urban residential property shall house more than four hens in total, regardless of hen ownership. So that would cover everything in the, the bylaw. Oh, unless <laughs> that's... Did I get it wrong, Fritz? Well, through you, uh, Madam Mayor, I think when we look at two different bylaws, they, they're both in effect. So the, by, the zoning bylaw deals with the number of chickens per property. And the animal care and control bylaw deals with the number of chickens per owner. So if one is more restrictive than the other, then that would apply. So I think we've got it covered under the zoning bylaw for the number of chickens on a property. If there's four, if there's four people on a the property, they can still only have four chickens, even if they each want to be an owner under the animal care and control. It's the most restrictive, and the, and the zoning bylaw will still apply to the limit, the number of chickens. Maybe if we could just clean it up in there, just so that it's more easily right. understood. Yeah. And I would caution against the urban residential because it's going to apply to the hamlets and stuff okay, as well. Okay, so, so. so residential. Just maximum of four per property. Yeah. Um, and then and that the hen enclosure be defined as both hen run and or hen enclosure, hen run hen and coop. hen coop. Got it. Um, and further, that section six point nine point six shall include the following um, as determined by a bylaw enforcement officer we could allow the bylaw enforcement officers to determine what proper disposal of manure is Perfect. and that'd be the the enforcement ones that we okay councillor columbus this time are we just dealing with councillor van passen's changes correct because just the with the new meeting format we okay. deal with the bylaw later on so no but are we dealing with this motion is printed on page 67 in Councilor Van Passen's vote, or is it something separate? Maybe. We're going to approve, yes, with the changes, and that public input has been received and is considered as part of the decision, and then the bylaw will be ratified later. So, moved by Councillor Van Pass and seconded by Councillor Rabbits. I think I saw your hand. Okay, any further discussion? Councillor Columbus. As I said before, I will not be supporting this. I do not believe that chickens should be in urban residential areas of Norfolk. They do attract rodents. I've had first-hand experience having lived with chickens for over 20 years. It's a big issue. And uh, 
in the town of Delhi a couple years ago, there was an issue where somebody had chickens, and the big issue was flies. People could not keep their doors open. They parked their vehicles there every time they got in when the windows were down, full of flies. Uh, you can bet that the manure is going to end up in the weekly garbage pickup. And uh, we heard in our notes here and through communications earlier that there have been health issues. The health unit really doesn't support it. There was an individual who went blind with the histoplasmosis. We all got that in the notes here. Another died from uh, salmonella at one time. This is, these are local people. Uh, we've received a lot of communication on this. There was 55 persons signed a petition opposed in Port Dover. We heard 323 opposed in the villages of Long Point. And uh, we heard that bylaw officers really won't have much time to deal with chickens per the report. And there must be a good reason why 100 years ago chickens were banned from being in urban settings. Thank you. Councillor Martin. Thank you, Mayor Chop. I too would just like to take a quick moment and address the petition that we all received in our agenda today. I know the neighborhood very well, uh, but uh, today I'm here um, to discuss the bylaw and how we move this forward based on the resources, the time and effort that this council and staff has, has uh, spent on this. So um, for me, the discussion is not about whether or not we're allowing the chickens. It is about the bylaw and what that looks like. Thank you. Any further discussion? Record a vote, ma'am. Sure. Uh, so this is on the amendments, uh, the amendments That staff bylaw. report GCS has approved, be approved to permit backyard oh. hens in Norfolk County with the amendments as described and that public input has been received for the application, therefore will be considered as part of the decision. Okay. Uh, so, uh, Councillor Geisens. Councillor Rabbits? Yes. Councillor Columbus? No. Councillor Martin? Yes. Councillor Van Passen? That staff report that DCS 19 75 backyard hens be approved to permit backyard hens in Norfolk County with the amendments as described and that public input has been received for this application, therefore, will be considered as part of the decision. Yes. <laughs> Councillor Huffman? Yes. Councillor Michelli? No. Councillor Taylor? Yes. Mayor Chop? Yes. The motion carries. Uh, six to three. Okay. I'm guessing uh, we should maybe take a 20 minute break. It's six o'clock now. I think everybody's probably starving. And Councillor Van Passen? I just have to clarify something in my mind. If we'd have voted down that last motion, um, chickens would still be allowed, we just wouldn't know under what rules, is that correct? Am I, we approved allowing chickens in December, and staff are coming back with the rules on how to keep the chickens. Now, later on at the council meeting, we're going to verify those bylaws, but if we didn't accept the staff report in our public hearing committee agenda, that wouldn't have changed the fact that we were already approved allowing chickens. Am I correct? Could I ask the clerk that? Uh, through you, uh, Mayor Chop, um, it, to, to get as complicated, it depends, um, is, is the best answer. Um, if there has been new information presented, um, and you could argue, of course, that the bylaw and the regulations and, and what you've heard tonight is new information, um, then, then reconsideration doesn't apply. So we don't want to make a statement that we weren't open to hear from the public tonight or to be swayed from a previous decision that council made prior to public input. So you could have uh, made a different decision this evening, um, but it would have been somewhat contradictory to what you had already decided. <laughs> all right um so we'll recess until uh 20 after six and hopefully all those enthusiastic new chicken owners will not ruin it for everybody <laughs>
It's Ontario, South Coast, you know, and it's surely not remote. If you pass through or spend a day or decide to call it home, you'll see why we love it here and are proud to call it our own. No, for no, for a southern county home. Take in the small town atmosphere, be amazed at all that we grow. Like our kids that go and see the world and can't wait to return home. Drop a line in a placid lake or stroll along the shore. Take a tour on a peaceful country road and found to be back for more. Oh, no. With hard work, we built a dream that only will enhance could do. It's on display at our fall fairs and at all the festivals too. Eerie beaches, Carolinian forests, where the flower and dogwoods bloom. Patchwork fields and rolling hills, it's just the place for you. soil lies a county called Norfolk. It's Ontario, south coast, you know, and it's surely not remote. If you pass through or spend a day or decide to call it home, you'll see why we love it here. Take in the small town atmosphere, be amazed at all that we grow. Like our kids that go and see the world and can't wait to return home. Drop a line in a placid lake or stroll along the shore. Take a tour on a peaceful country road and found to be back for more. Oh, no. Hard work, we built a dream that only will enhance could do. It's on display at our fall fairs and at all the festivals too. Eerie beaches, Carolinian forests, where the flower and dogwoods bloom. Patchwork fields and rolling hills, it's just the place for Stranger love.
soil lies a county called Norfolk. It's Ontario, south coast, you know, and it's surely not remote. If you pass through or spend a day or decide to call it home, you'll see why we love it here. Take in the small town atmosphere, be amazed at all that we grow. Like our kids that go and see the world, and can't wait to return home. Drop a line in a placid lake, or stroll along the shore. Take a tour on a peaceful country road. On a strip of sandy soil lies a county called Norfolk. It's Ontario, south coast, you know, and it's surely not remote. If you pass through or spend a day or decide to call it home, you'll see why we love it here. Take in the small town atmosphere, be amazed at all that we grow. Like our kids that go and see the world, and can't wait to return home. Drop a line in a placid lake, or stroll along the shore. Take a tour on a peaceful country road. I'm bound to be back for more. 
soil lies a county called Norfolk. It's Ontario, south coast, you know, and it's surely not remote. If you pass through or spend a day or decide to call it home, you'll see why we love it here. Take in the small town atmosphere, be amazed at all that we grow. Like our kids that go and see the world and can't wait to return home. Drop a line in a placid lake or stroll along the shore. Take a tour on a peaceful country road. Build a dream that only willing hands could do. It's on display at our fall fairs and at all the festivals too. Eerie beaches, Carolinian forests, where the flower and dog woods bloom. Patchwork fields and rolling hills, it's just the place for you. soil lies a county called Norfolk. It's Ontario, south coast, you know, and it's surely not remote. If you pass through or spend a day or decide to call it home, you'll see why we love it here. No, 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 we know 
know you can't go wrong as a friendly folk of Norfolk. You won't be a stranger long. Take in the small town atmosphere, be amazed at all that we.
Okay, if we're ready to get started again, um, first I'll turn it over to Andy uh, just to finish up some housekeeping items with the uh, public hearings that I wasn't aware of. So uh, thank you, uh, Mayor Chop. So um, for this meeting and for our August meeting, we're kind of running in an interim period where we had our, our <coughs> we have our new procedural bylaw, but we still kind of have a structure. We don't have the separate date for our public hearing. So we need a motion, uh, I'll read out what I've prepared, that council ratify the decisions of the public hearings committee and that the minutes of the July 9th, 2019 meeting of the public hearings committee be presented to council for identification of errors and omissions. So that just essentially means that the minutes that will be prepared from the meeting that we just held won't be open for full review and you can't pull items on those minutes essentially. Okay, can I have a mover, seconder? Councillor uh, Rabbit, seconded by Councillor Taylor. All those in favor? <clears throat> That's carried. <laughs> Opposed? Okay. <clears throat> and um, so I guess then that'll conclude the uh, public hearings. We'll move back over to the council agenda. And um, I guess first maybe we'll deal with consent item B, which was the easy one that wasn't pulled. Um, and that's that staff report DCS 19-28, the special event temporary closures carnival be received as information and that council authorized staff to approve the request from Culture Rodeo to temporarily close Sydenham Street, Norfolk Street South, Robinson Street and Colburn Street between the hours of 6 and 7.30 p.m. on August 9th, 2019. And further that council authorized staff to approve the request from Culture Rodeo to temporarily close Peel Street from Colburn to Norfolk Street South, Kent Street from Peel Street to Robinson Street in the municipal parking lot on Kent Street from 8 a.m. to 11.59 p.m. If I could have a mover and a seconder, moved by Councillor Rabbit, seconded by Councillor Taylor. All those in favor? And that's carried. And the next item, uh, Councillor Van Passen, is the municipal drinking water. I'll turn that um, over to you. Thank you, Madam Mayor. I, I'm not so sure if I had a question for staff or a, a rant. I'm just going to rant for a while. But... This is presented to us as a consent item. We have five municipal drinking water systems. We have to have a report into the province by August the 20th. So unless we approve this today, our next council meeting will be too late to approve it and we will lose our licenses to produce water for all the urban areas. Um, it's a financial report going to the province. Now I went through it all I went through our budgets, I went through the capital forecast. I only found one number in all those reports that is the same. So which numbers am I supposed to believe? The ones in this report, the one in our budgets, the one in the capital forecast? Um, but I haven't, we don't have the time to question it. We can't send it back to staff or we can't defer it because it needs to be approved. So, you know, either this should have been brought forward a little while ago or, um, Maybe uh, we would have had a chance to look at it then, but on the last day, you're going to dump this on our, our desk, and there's no way to verify which numbers are correct and what we're actually approving. So I think I'm done my rant, and uh, I'm, unless I could frame that sort of in question to the CAO about uh, how we can do it better next time. <laughs> well, through you, Council, uh, Councillor, obviously... You know, a lead time, a bit of a lead time to to the uh, council would have been preferred. So next time we'll definitely get it out ahead of time too. So is there any comment on the numbers, on which numbers are the accurate numbers, the budgeted numbers or those in this report? Uh, Mayor Chop, um, I would uh, defer to uh, Mr. Johnson, uh, he was instrumental in putting the package together. I think he's certainly able to maybe add to that. Uh, thank you. So, so through you, um, Madam Mayor to Councillor Van Passen. So that the financial plan is based on a lot of assumptions, and it's a it's obviously a forecast into future years on what the uh, the, the water financial sustainability is. Um, Another reason, and I really hate to bring this up again, but those are in PSAP format, and that's required by the province. So those numbers will not tie into budgets uh, because the budget is on a modified accrual basis. So that uh, it, it's that's just generally the requirement that we have. 
in providing that information to the province in order to get the license. So it's basically a, a, a tick on uh, the requirements in order to keep the licensing going as a financial plan. Um, there are a, a number of assumptions that we used to, to, um, to uh, uh, forecast the, the amounts uh, in the future. Uh, we used a uh, variation of uh, com com uh, consumer price indexes. Uh, we used uh, debt that we were expecting uh, and, and so on and so forth. And all that was, was put into that, uh, into that report. So there was a lot of work that was put into it and uh, it's something that uh, we're going to pay closer to attention to in the coming years. We want to, instead of, that's a, something that we need to do every five years, which is the minimum. Uh, something that we would like to do is perhaps tweak it every, every year to, to ensure that uh, uh, the numbers are accurate. And uh, definitely uh, next time it's a requirement for council, uh, we'll make sure that it's not the, uh, the meeting right before the recess. I'm just want to make the statement again perhaps it would be if, if the auditors are going through and they're using the PSAB format at the end of the year maybe come this budget it might be prudent to have a column that's running the PSAB number so that we are able to compare apples to apples at the beginning and at the end of the year um, okay is there a mover and a seconder for the motion as presented councillor Geisens seconded by councillor Rabbits. any further discussion all those in favor? That's good. Okay. Just give me one second here. Okay, consent items, presentations are all completed. Moving on to uh, the communications. Then we have two resolutions from uh, tonight at the request of council members. Councillor Columbus, if you would like to introduce uh, item A. Okay, so I have a motion uh, in support of that that's been moved by Councillor Van Passen and seconded by Councillor Michelli. Is there any further discussion on that item? All those in favor? And that's carried. Uh, next item uh, was Councillor Van Passen. Yes, thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, this was a resolution that was circulated last week um, regarding the enforcement of safety on family farms. Uh, there's a genuine concern out in the rural uh, farming community of um, people trespassing on their property, the problems with biosecurity, also with um, people that uh, are not really supportive of the fact that these farmers have animals and they've, uh, I think we've had a couple of cases in Norfolk County where they've went and released uh, the, the animals off the farms and uh, People are quite concerned about their safety and the safety of their livestock. So I think we should support this resolution and uh, talk to our provincial government about it. Okay, thanks, Councillor Columbus. Uh, so that motion has been moved uh, as presented by Councillor Van Passen and seconded by Councillor Michelli. Any further discussion? All those in favor? And that's carried. Uh, moving on now to the approval of minutes. Um, we have... Uh, the council minutes from June 25th, 2019, and the special council minutes uh, from June 24th, 2019. Uh, so the open and closed council minutes of June 25th have been circulated, as well as the special council minutes of June 24th. Are there any errors or omissions? Councillor Martin. 
Thank you, Mayor Chop. Uh, Council, June 25th. I just want to uh, quick, very quickly reference with the clerk, page 113, the motion that report CAO 19-23 respecting amendments to the integrity commissioner process be received and that proposed calendar be adopted with the amendments. We did find an additional date change. Uh, and is this okay as it reads or? Um, through you, Mayor Chop. Uh, so there is um, an additional amending bylaw on tonight's agenda, and there's also a revised calendar that's circulated at the back of your information package that has a, a that has the, the correction noted with. Anyone else? Okay, seeing uh, none, they will be considered adopted and signed by myself uh, and the clerk. On to reports of committees. Uh, we have the Council and Committee Minutes uh, open and closed session from July 2nd, uh, 2019. Uh, two items have been pulled from the Council and Committee Minutes, um, but I have a motion to approve all items excluding those. That's been moved by Councillor uh, Van Passen and seconded by Councillor Martin. All those in favor? And that's carried. So the first item uh, was resolution number four, respecting Inwell, and that was actually pulled by both Councillor Van Passen and myself. Uh, so I think I'm gonna ask um, our Deputy Mayor to uh, chair the meeting um, for the course of Inwell. So uh, Mayor Chop, do you wanna I'll take away Councillor Van Passen? Thank you, Madam Deputy Mayor. Um, just as I stated that the meeting that I supported moving it on to tonight uh, gave me an extra week to sort of do some more homework, some more background, look at the documentation that was presented to us last week. And, uh, you know, I still think that it's, uh, the project has great merit. I think that uh, we can work with the group to, uh, within Dwell to try to let them succeed in their goal, but I am just not willing to commit to $250,000 a year for the next 20 years. Um, I don't want to handcuff the, any future terms of council with commitments that we make. Um, I'm more than happy to work with them on some of the suggestions on the, uh, uh, the different uh, grant programs that we have, the waiving of the building permit fees, the uh, um, tax increment uh, relief program, uh, those kind of things that uh, we can commit to in this term and not uh, saddle somebody else with our decisions and uh, we would revisit it uh, at the beginning or the next term of council that council can revisit the whole option and they can make their uh, case again and we'd have a better understanding of our situation better understanding of the the changes that the province is bringing down in the, the health care field so uh, I, I can't support this particular recommendation as long as it's got that 250,000 a year for 20 years in there so uh, I'll leave it at that and uh, get the opinion of the rest of the council. Mayor Chop, I guess for myself as well, I just, <clears throat> you know, we've been through our audited statements and uh, we have been running a deficit every year and we have major infrastructure problems uh, in this county right now that we are barely able to fund. And I just, I can't say enough about Inwell from having gone to Hamilton Hall and I, I think it's incredible an incredible facility and incredible what they do. Um, but what bothers me a little bit is that we never knew this number or that there was even going to be such an ask despite several presentations that had come forward. And given that this isn't the first project of this type, I don't understand why everything wasn't sort of transparent and, and upfront from the beginning. Um, you know, we don't have, unfortunately, we don't have cash in Norfolk County to give, but we do have a lot of other things that we could give and that I would fully support, whether that was, you know, donating a piece of land, uh, you know, the development grants has been talked about, the tax incentive reliefs, everything that's not ultimately going to be put on the levy and, and, and cost the Norfolk County taxpayer. I also would fully support assisting Inwell with, you know, lobbying and, and challenging the provincial uh, government to provide funding uh, directly to them without the support of the municipality. Because when I look back at my first trip to Hamilton Hall, everybody that I met in the, in the kind of working group that we had that day, they weren't from Norfolk County. And so we've seen one project there. We have another project coming forward. We're likely, if this goes forward, to see more projects in the future. 
And I see a tsunami of more developments coming forward um, and more asks of the taxpayer. And again, I think that this is a provincial responsibility and that this should not be a municipal uh, responsibility. Um, I guess that's kind of the basis for me having, uh, for having pulled the motion today. I, I certainly would support, again, donation of land, waiving of taxes, of you know, t providing the tax increment grant, um, of a number, number of, of items. But I can't, I can't support this being on, on, the, on the levy. Councillor Columbus. Thank you, uh, Madam Deputy Mayor, and I too, uh, I've voiced my concern on this uh, previously, and I'm pleased to hear Councilor Van Passen is supporting it now, the, the objection to granting this $250,000 for 20 years. And they always say a politician who changes his mind is a politician who thinks. So thank you, Councilor Van Passen. Um, yeah. Anyway, a quarter of 1% is what this would mean on our tax levy in 2020. When we're discussing this in January or February, that's what, it, we're right off the bat, we're gonna have $250,000 sitting there, which is a quarter of 1%, and we all know how difficult that is to get down when we're working at that. And this is gonna be for 20 years, so that's $5 million of taxpayers' money that goes to uh, this project, and hopefully there will be offsetting costs, but the way the recommendation reads is that that's what we could be in for. Um, just wanted to say that basically as, as far as uh, foregoing building permit fees and that type of thing, I know they're substantial. I would gladly support that. And, uh, but I can't see mortgaging future councils to that commitment of uh, $5 million down the road. It's certainly a development of this nature will certainly enhance the Norfolk Street downtown. It'll help all the neighboring property owners for sure because it, it will but somebody else could pick it up too and do the same thing. So either way, as long as this building gets fixed up, it will enhance the, the downtown for viability purposes. Thank you. Councillor Taylor. Thank you, Deputy Mayor Martin. Um, first, I'd like to see if uh, council would allow a representative from Indwell to come speak. We've heard some suggestions and some questions that we're all, if Indwell would consider this, if Indwell would consider that. So I feel it's appropriate to have someone at the stand to at least provide comment to us. Um, through, the, through the clerk, are you looking for me to make that judgment call or? Um, through you, uh, Chair Martin, um, certainly usually what we do is just a general majority show of hands, if people would accept that. Sure, uh, show of hands, those in favor for Inwell to come and speak. And that is carried. Thank you. Um, Graham? Uh, first, I guess we've heard a couple suggestions there. Just wondering if you'd be able to provide some comment on those. Thank you very much, Councillor and uh, uh, Deputy Mayor. And um, my name is Graham Cubitt. I'm the Director of Projects and Development at Indwell. So um, I think these are very helpful comments. And uh, perhaps I could say, I think the most, uh, the most strategic Thing that uh, maybe you could do as council would be Mayor Chop for you to come with us to the province and say these are provincial responsibilities we know that this is a, a challenge for every community but we actually are taking leadership here in Norfolk County to address an issue which is common to every community across our region and across this province there are very few solutions being put forward in any community and we talk to a lot of communities and Norfolk County has a unique opportunity to actually push the agenda with our MPP to Queen's Park to say, let's make it happen. This is a budget that is very clear and transparent. We can take that budget to Queen's Park without any hesitation. But without the support of council to, to, to drive the decision forward, we can't have credibility to the senior level, levels of government. I think to um, Councillor Van Passen, to your question about um, the length of time and the 20 year commitment, there's many different ways to um, to break up the budget, and I think that we could look at that <clears throat> to look at that issue. Um, for Hamilton Hall, our agreement with council at the time was a 10-year commitment as well, with the renewal or a review at the end of that 10 years. We did have no track record uh, four years ago when we started the conversation here, so um, we trust that our track record there will carry forward with the with the council at the end of those 10 years, just as we would we would trust and have confidence that our track record on this project after 10 years 
would be enough to say, yes, we believe and we continue to believe in the value of this project. So I think those two would be things that would be very strategic that we could handle, we could address. It's always challenging with capital projects to get capital down the road. Once something's built, nobody likes to fund it the same way as sort of the, the upfront. They like to see themselves as doing something strategic, particularly the federal uh, government. So if we don't apply for as much capital up front as possible now, it makes it a lot harder down the road. Our goal would be to minimize the long-term impact to the municipal levy. In fact, even if we can get it to be, to be no impact on the municipal levy, that would be our ultimate goal. How can we do that together by finding those channels to the capital? Councillor Michelli. Thank you, Madam Deputy Mayor. Um, to uh, Graham, uh, so with that in mind, your experience with Hamilton Hall, um, would it be um, fair to ask that perhaps you might be willing to uh, you know, listen or discuss some possible other uh, review terms and, and arrangements, uh, even if they were something in the order of, of allowing uh, the county to opt out of the plan at certain intervals of time if, if certain conditions had not been met, uh, maybe even four years, five years, that, that type of thing? Uh, through you, um, Deputy Mayor. I, the short answer is yes. We could look at different options for re times, periods of review. A four-year review is not a very long time. Like the project, if we start construction this summer, uh, would open roughly 12 to 16 months after. So um, by the time we open, that would only be like three years in. Um, I think for the, for the f federal programs, um, uh, a, shorter, a shorter period of commitment is less strategic than a longer period of commitment. That being said, I understand if we went halfway back from 20 years to maybe 10 years, or even some sort of, when you say review, do you mean cancellation or do you mean review to confirm we're on track? I guess that would be a, diff a nuance that we might differentiate. It, we have absolutely no problem to do like an annual review or a, or a thorough sort of a strategic overview every few years. Um, in order to get, the, in order to assure funding for enough time to actually find the re remaining funding, something in between would make, would make sense for us. Uh, yes, uh, Graham, just to, to your question about the, uh, we already have in place uh, annual reviews will be coming forward. Mm -hmm. That's already what we anticipate. Uh, what I think I'm asking about, and I'm trying to uh, sort of, in a way, uh, assure uh, you know, the, the mayor and the uh, Councillor Columbus, Councillor Van Passen, that we have a little bit more of, a <clears throat> of, of some control if, um, if we get to a, a point where after review um, we would have an option. Uh, and I, for the lack of a better term right now, I would ask about the possibility of some kind of an opting out opportunity. Um, and I realize that maybe four years is too short, um, but I, I think that probably Council will maybe agree that Perhaps 10 years could be too long. Uh, and, and by the way, I, I, I do want to just uh, you know, commend uh, Indwell again for their track record. Um, if you had been coming here totally cold from outside, I, I don't think council would have listened very long, but mm -hmm. you have a, an impressive track record that I know council is aware of. So I, I, w I would want to keep that in mind, but I'm just hoping that maybe uh, through some uh, process of discussion, we could get a little closer to some kind of assurances or security that the county could rely on. Through, through you, Madam Chair. Um, our fundamental approach will be to work with you to find what you can be comfortable with to guarantee our collective long-term success. If we need to find a, if we need to find a, a review period where you have an opt-out it does need to protect the cost of the investment that we're making into the community as a community. It's not just us who are making the, the investment. We are, we are not a business. We are, we are a registered Ontario corporation, but we are a not-for-profit charity. So all of our funds, in effect, are public funds. Any money that we invest has to remain as a charitable investment in the community. So if, if there's a cancellation of the project, if there's a cancellation of the county's commitment, that money has to then, the project has to be divested to a charitable asset or to a charitable organization 
or to you, know, you as the county perhaps. So the exit strategy would need to be considered for what that would look like. The other challenge is that when we sign a contribution agreement with CMHC, it has to be for 20 years. So in order to engage the full value from the federal government into the project, uh, the full maximized grant amount, we would want to do that in a way that we were signing a 20 year commitment with them. So we need to have some way to make sure that we can bridge the 20 years if the county backs out. I think five years is a too far a stretch from 20 years for us to be able to handle. I think that 10 years we could sort of figure out, okay, we're halfway there. What does it mean to finish the contract out on the terms of what we would have to sign on to for CMHC? But to go 15 years is, is a long way to anticipate for us being on the hook to CMHC for, for something which we, which we wouldn't be able to afford and maintain the program. That's, that's not a solid answer, I understand, because I think we would need to like work out what the nuances might be within that, but that would be the inclination towards something longer than five years. Thank you, Graham, and, and I think in a nutshell, that kind of also sums up the county's position. Yeah. Uh, we are in very much the same situation uh, as a result of the, the circumstances we are in. Might, might I comment back to that? Which is why I do believe, and we do believe collectively, that the number one way to succeed for all of us as a, as a, a rural community that needs this, housing, this type of housing support here is to push the senior levels of government, which have a very different way of taxing, to actually bring the resources that they have already committed to or that they can commit to, to bring them here. If we go together to the province, that's a much more successful way than if we just go to the province or if you just go to the province, because we know that the province can fund. They're not as creative necessarily or as, as aware of the local needs, but if we tell them very decisively what the local needs are and how we're committed to that as a community, we believe that bringing, you know, if we can bring two and a half million dollars to, to this project from the, from the province, that automatically wipes off 10 years of, of the commitment. And if we can do that at the beginning of the project, that automatically guarantees that county that the county will never fund beyond the full 10 years. If we can get it beyond the two and a half million, which I think is quite possible, it keeps cutting that back so that there's no liability to the county for anything. Every dollar saved in capital saves in the operating side of things. Councillor Hoffman. Thank you, Deputy Mayor Martin. Um, so last week, I know I, I made my position very clear, and I, I have a few things that I just want to um, mention to my fellow colleagues. So perfect timing tonight with our strategic priorities, and I'll just reiterate to everyone that um, strategic plan one, as one team, we are true to our roots. We harness changes and embrace new ideas in a way that is undeniably Norfolk. So in response to a couple comments from my colleagues about that we can't saddle a, previous, uh, a future council, that's not our role. That's not what we sit and we make decisions based on. Um, with that, we would never make any movement forward. Um, I could say, I don't really think maybe four years from now the new council wants chickens in the backyards, but that's happening. So that that's... To me, that's not that's not even a, a, an argument that we would we would entertain. Um, I strongly know that the staff of Norfolk County, the staff of Indwell, are experts in ascertaining the best options for funding from the provincial and federal government. That is not our expertise. That is their expertise. When Graham speaks about 2.5 million off the top, is that doable? Absolutely. I, I have absolutely not a doubt in my mind that 2.5 is, is attainable. Now, in regards to the fact, um, to Mayor Chop's comments, when we're dealing with complex issues of individuals and supported housing, I understand the argument, not the argument, I understand the thoughts that we want to make sure that we're serving our residents first. Unfortunately, there's a lot of complex um, things that go into finding the services that are the right fit for right individuals. And I know that it's not always an individual who may actually live right in Norfolk, but it could be someone who lived here and is now in another community, but this is their home community, that the province has different 
um, verbiage for those types of things. So that to me is very short-sighted and, and that's like, you know, we're cutting off our nose to spite our face that, okay, we can't guarantee every resident in there will be um, born and raised in Norfolk. Um, I believe the other thing is that when we look at um, previous with this council and we received, I know that we all did because I was CC'd in all of them, an enormous amount of positive support from residents, from business owners, from pastors, from ministers, and we have we have a due diligence to be responsible for the what our constituents want. And in terms of previous councils, I guess I wouldn't be very happy to know that we've been stuck from our previous councils with dealing with this Norfolk Inn. It has been on the books for years. It is the biggest eyesore in Norfolk County, and it has caused an enormous amount of um, harm to business owners and downtown residents. So when we're look, going back to October, to the campaign trail, and we're talking about all Norfolk, we're talking about change, we are accountable to these citizens, we're accountable to the business owners, and when I'm getting 30 emails to one, 30 positives to one negative, I have no other option than to support what the constituents in Norfolk County want. And this is what they want, and this is what we need to give to Indwell and to the citizens of Norfolk County. Mayor Chop. used to this um i like that you I'm, I'm i would go to the province with you tomorrow and i think everybody knows if i'm given a task i can usually go at it pretty hard so and i would do again anything to help you guys out it's just the, the piece on the levy that is uh, because i i differ from councillor hoffman's view in the sense that i don't i don't think it's the majority of people i think that we have and how would you answer this question a lot of people here that are residents just within here in Simcoe that are barely paying their taxes and putting food on their table and now they're being asked to you know have a quarter percent put on their levy next year uh, to be able to fund this housing project how do you explain that to, to them and and further to that does that mean once this one's built I mean you guys do grow and you do build more and more and you've built one here and it's been successful and now you've built another and I'm assuming that part of the reason you guys have come this direction, your roots were in Hamilton originally, were they not? You can't afford, like, land prices there are out of control now. And so this is the natural ground for future development. And I, you know, where does it end at this point? And again, because I believe that it is a provincial responsibility. And Through, through you, Deputy Chair, um, Deputy Mayor. Um, we're actually here in Norfolk County, not because land prices are too expensive in Hamilton. Um, we could we could spend all of our time in Hamilton, uh, and would be very successful. Um, we're here because the people of Norfolk County um, said we need solutions for our county, for people who live here and call this place home. It was Heidi Van Dyke uh, and staff from uh, the county. It was the church out serving, uh, and it was. Um, uh, three things happened in one week. Church who's serving called, Heidi called, and uh, our executive director at the time uh, saw uh, Hamilton Hall on the internet, on uh, the ICX. So we took it as a sign. If we, you know, three things in one week, it must be divine leading. We are a Christian organization, so we said, well, we better investigate this. But it was the response of the people in this county saying, we need to do something, and what can you do to help us here that brought us here? We, we only want to be where we're wanted. So, like, candidly, if, if, if you don't want us here, that's fine, because we are in very high demand in other communities. And we will take our expertise to other communities that, that do want us, and so that's not, a, that's not a threat, it's just the practical reality. But what I would say is this county has an exceptional opportunity to provide leadership in a way that other communities don't. It's it's we are already here we already have a track record we already have business relationships you mentioned all the uh, the the businesses that have supported this this proposal leah and i were just doing the math earlier with how much we've bought in furniture from leon's downtown from the shots who wrote a letter of support and it's over four hundred thousand dollars i believe in the last uh, three years that we've spent 
in downtown Simcoe go buying furniture for our buildings through the local Leons. It's these kind of relationships that we believe in here because it's a community that we're rooted in and we're committed to. We're not going to abandon Hamilton Hall if we don't do Norfolk Inn. Um, and there is a demand for buying that building. We've had three slumlord, slumlords call us already, two of them from Hamilton, saying, well, if it doesn't go through, let us know because we'll rent it the way it was. So that's, that's the reality of the market. We don't want that to happen because we believe that the future of downtown is much more important than the value of one piece of property. And we believe that our expertise, we are the experts in Ontario in rural rental, residential, affordable housing development. So we have the opportunity as a community to do something here that is exceptionally compelling. We know that it costs money and we know that it's more than we want to put on the, the levy here. So that's, we're all in agreement on that. It's how do we actually get the money to Norfolk County so that we don't have to put on the levy. And that's where it takes cooperation. And I do believe that if we go together to the province, you know, we have a, a long-standing, well-established MPP who has many relationships in Queen's Park now. How do we work together with Queen's Park to say this county deserves the right supportive housing in this community so people in this community can stay here rather than moving to Brantford, rather than moving to Hamilton, rather than moving to London or Niagara? People in Norfolk County want to stay here. I was just talking to somebody at the pizza shop across the street um, during the break. She said, well, I'm, she said, you're from Indwell, right? And I said, yeah, Lee and I. And uh, she's like, well, I'm not sure I support that project. She's like, and we're like, oh, would you say why? She's like, well, my daughter's an addict and she doesn't pull herself up by her socks. And what help do I get looking after her? So it wasn't that she, the daughter didn't deserve it. It was what help did she get to look after her daughter? This is the kind of complexity we work in every day to say how can we have an inclusive community where people who are working every day in our community can stay in our community and have the supports they need. So how do we do that together is the question we have. And we think that Norfolk Inn working with you is a very strategic way to get there. If I can just keep going, I have just a couple more questions. You mentioned earlier about the 10 year commitment with Hamilton Hall. Could you elaborate on that? So similar to, um, similar to this council, at the time that we came to Hamilton Hall, we didn't have any track record in Norfolk County. We had the experience in other communities, Oxford County being probably the most comparable, um, as it is now, uh, and in Hamilton. <coughs> we know that uh, the federal and provincial programs typically are per capita, the affordable housing program. So there's a certain amount of money is given to the municipality based on uh, the population. So Hamilton gets five times, six times as much as much money as Norfolk County does. So instead of having, um, we, we were able to get capital funding and then there's an operating agreement that we have, which is typically, it's, it's provincial funding which comes through the homelessness budget, but not knowing what kind of commitment of that funding would be, like would the province continue to fund those and what would be we be on the hook for as a county Council decided at the time to say, let's do 10 year commitment with review after that. Okay, so here's a little bit, uh, I'm honest, a little bit frustrated this one because I asked tw not once but twice about what the commitment was for Hamilton Hall. And I had two members of staff, as well as yourself, tell me that there was no previous commitment. And although I wasn't able to find the previous motion from years ago, I was told by previous councillors that it did in fact exist and I asked a couple of times and I was told that there was nothing with Hamilton Hall. I'm not sure what you're referring to as nothing uh, in terms of the commitment. We do receive funding every year from the county. It is provincial funding through the CHIPI program, the Consolidated Homelessness Investment Program. Okay. It's not municipal levy funding. Well, I asked if there was a commitment on behalf of the county, so if you didn't receive it, I'm assuming then that it would impact the levy if you did not receive that money? And if that's the case, then why is this it's, project you know, different? Why couldn't we give, why would it? I guess, I guess that, so that's, the, that's what we're looking for, is where can the money come from? We'd rather none of it come from the municipal levy, but right now the Chippy Fund or any other provincial fund that is a current standing program is not deep enough to fund this project 
and Hamilton Hall and the other commitments within the county that the county has. But the, the marketing piece with this so far has been that don't worry, Oxford doesn't pay anything and it's not going to happen here in Norfolk and everything will be covered. But now you're saying that it's looking like these other pools of money are, are tapped out with Hamilton Hall and so on. Uh, through, through you, Deputy Mayor, um, it's not as simple as that because there are multiple programs that are available. In Norfolk County, the CHIPI funding isn't deep enough to draw this program, Norfolk in, in addition to Hamilton Hall. In Oxford County, that's what they've done, is they've spread their CHIPI funding more broadly and juggled other funds so that the CHIPI funding or other funds from the province cover the commitment that the municipality made so it hasn't impacted the levy. It, that's possible internally to Norfolk County if maybe other programs were cancelled or other things. I'm, I'm not internal to the county so I can't commit the county to cancelling other funding to other programs in order to fund Norfolk in and I don't want to suggest that that happens. That's why we're asking for a new contribution from Norfolk County. But we do believe that the mon money isn't just money. There's different pots of money. There's different pools of money. It comes from different places. New money from new programs or new sources from the province or the federal government need to come into Norfolk County to fund this project rather than just stretching existing pools further. Okay, so that's a little bit different, though, than what we were hearing before. This is saying that there's we need to still go out and try to find this. I mean, the way that it was presented was it was kind of a no-brainer because it will all, it will, there won't be an impact on the levy because the funding is out there and it will naturally flow to Norfolk County. But that's not what you're saying now. You're saying that the funding that's been used for Hamilton Hall under a 10-year commitment, which, again, I asked twice about, is used up in that regard and is used up with other funding housing situations that are going on in Norfolk County. I mean, it's not that we're not doing anything in Norfolk okay. County. We're using all the funds that we're bringing in and we are dispensing them for the people that need it. But again, that's provincial funding that's coming in and because it, it's a provincial responsibility. Mm -hmm. Through you, um, Deputy Mayor, I, it, it, I think it is inaccurate to say that we haven't been presenting this as as hard work and new money that needs to come. There is no end to the amount of work, well, we hope that there is an end to the amount of work it will take to raise the money to make this project possible. It will take new money coming into the county. It will not be from existing programs that, it, that are currently available. There is new programs coming available. The, the province has just announced a new pro program, I think it was mentioned last week, called OFI, the Ontario Priority Housing Initiative. We're still hearing, like, nuances about that program this week and we believe that that will be a, an opportunity to tap into. We think that we know that this is a federal election year. There's always federal election funding that's, a, I should say, there's always funding that seems to be released in federal election years and so we need to work as a community and be ready to apply or to receive that kind of funding. It's, but we also need to approach directly to the Ministry of Housing, to other ministries to say let's solve these problems here with new funding to Norfolk County. I could ask just one more, Council Member. I'm sorry. Um, I don't know. Do you know much about CMHA? I just had a meeting with them the other day, and uh, they provide 240 beds in uh, Haldeman, Norfolk, and Brant, I believe, across the three. Uh, and they have an $8 million operating budget. And uh, they have an agreement with the municipalities to uh, waive um, taxes on their properties. Uh, they told me that that has only ever been exercised once. Um, and it is all funded through government programs and so on without any ask uh, by CMHA upon the three municipalities uh, that they serve. Um, so I just, I think there's a way to do this. I just don't think it's through a commitment on the tax levy. And again, I can't reiterate enough. I mean, I do think what you've done with Hamilton, it's incredible. I was blown away. I just don't think that it's a municipal um, responsibility of the Norfolk County taxpayer. Councillor Taylor. Thank you, Deputy Mayor Martin. Um, first, I, we go back to the Oxford example a lot, and I know that those buckets of money are going to be different buckets of money. Um, I'm just wondering if you could get 
into that relationship you have with Oxford County of how the two of you actually work together to access the buckets of money? Because we know over, at once they made the $330,000 commitment, they have not had a dollar of that come from the levy. So as over that time of that commitment, new buckets of money have dried up, new buckets of money have come into existence. And I'm just wondering if you could dive into what that relationship looks like, how you actually get that, what the working relationship is. Through, through you, um, Deputy Mayor. Um, our relationship with Oxford County is in many respects very similar to our relationship with Norfolk County um, in that decisions that are made at council are very important decisions that guide the work that we do then subsequently. So with Norfolk County, or with Oxford County, um, we have a relationship where ideas that they have of problems that they need to have solved, we work on together. So that ideas for projects like ha uh, Harvey Woods Lofts was actually the idea of county staff who brought it to our attention, that the building was available, it was in distress under its mortgage, et cetera, et cetera. And we worked together with the treasurer, the CAO, uh, the warden, the, the housing department, um, uh, EMS, to figure out uh, what would be the right solution for the project and what would be a viable business model to make it happen. Council approved that business model, directed staff to you know, make, you know, make it happen. And since directing that, staff have worked to find the money without impacting the levy. We're not you know, party to every decision internally to how they decide which pools to draw from or how that is, is figured out. But what we do do is spend a lot of time working directly with county staff to make sure that our programs fit within the needs that the county has with their waiting list or with their housing supports or their, you know, their opening and closing of social housing um, with emerging needs, whether it's the opioid crisis or other kinds of problems, so that our programs are meeting the needs of, of the county. Blossom Park is a great example. It's a program, a new building which we opened this week, 34 apartments. It replaced an outdated group home. It responded to the community's need. Oxford County put in a million dollars which catalyzed uh, $2.9 million of CMHC funding uh, as a grant, which catalyzed 450000 roughly of Ministry of Health funding, which allowed us to then actually sort of be, be, a, be able to create a program which didn't exist in Oxford County, where the county doesn't provide ongoing supports in that capital way. It's, again, a complicated sort of relationship. I should say it's a complicated business plan for each project, but it's based on a, a relationship of mutuality and trust. And we have the same kind of relationship with Norfolk County staff, where the creativity doesn't stop with the decision of council. The creativity continues, the problem solving continues, to say well, how do we use every dollar that we're entrusted with today to solve the problems that are emerging tomorrow and to continue the commitments that we have today. The other part of that is that we, Oxford County has taken a different, another kind of lead as communities across this region have a housing shortage. There's a housing crisis that's not just impacting people on social assistance. It's impacting employers. It's impacting families trying to find supportive or affordable housing. And the thing that we're seeing in Norfolk, in Oxford County, and this is an opportunity for Norfolk County as well, is how do we transform projects, projects like this into a broader catalyst for broader investment in rental, affordable rental housing? We did a presentation, I think Councillor Van Passen was there, Mayor Chop, you were there, at SCORE, the South Central Ontario Region Economic Development Corporation, which Norfolk County is a member of. We've had a number of subsequent conversations with SCORE members, uh, Deputy Mayors, Mayors last week, um, and today another call with OMAFRA around how does housing, how does affordable housing become part of a, a catalytic solution to the business problems that we have in all of our communities? And this is where we see Norfolk in being a part of what Indwell might do working with the county to say how do we address broader issues of rental housing and affordable housing, not only here in Simcoe, but across the county of Norfolk. Um, and I just, without the levy commitment that we know may not actually have any impact on the levy, there is no funding from other levels of government. That's, that's the reality. That, that's correct. Councillor Van Passen, then Huffman and Mayor Chop. Yes, thank you, Madam Deputy Mayor. Um, when you started your presentation, you said the most important thing that we could do for you is have the mayor 
go to Toronto and you know argue on your behalf. She's already committed to doing that. Um, you know, when I started, I was offering up uh, what is it, eighty hundred, about five hundred thousand dollars over the next two years. That's not in my mind not chump change. And you know, with the the idea to review that once you start up and running, we would look at uh, sharing work uh, workers. Uh, like staffing resources, those kind of things. Um, you know, let's discuss it more once the operations start. And, you know, we'll continue, our staff will continue looking for grants. And, uh, um, you know, I don't think that's a, a, a bad commitment on behalf of this county. But then, uh, you know, I hear you talking about, well, if you're not wanted, you're going to go away. Well, you know, don't try playing the victim on us here that, uh, you know, that's chump change of half a million dollars in a, in a few weeks of the mayor's time. That's nothing. Uh, um, I will would commit to those kind of things, but I just can't commit that long term. We'll work on that once. Like to me, I thought that most of that was for operational funds. Well, we'll get you up and operating, and then have that discussion again at that time on what your commitment mark. Or if there are grants becoming available, federal, provincial dollars for capital grants, I'd be a willing partner on the capital grants uh, if you can get some good funding levels from the feds in the province for the capital, the mortgage won't be so big, the operational costs will be lower down the road. You know, as a one-off there, I'm more than willing to sit down with it. But again, I, you know, I would take the recommendation in our minutes and just delete that that one line of uh, approve an annual operating grant, 250000 a year for 20 years, and we'll insert that the mayor will go with you and uh, rattle some chains in Queen's Park and in uh, Ottawa. and. Uh, then I'm ready to pass that motion, but as it sits, I'm still not there. To you, Deputy Mayor, uh, Councillor, I, uh, I had written down number two thing would be Councillor's suggestion. Um, I, it, uh, I, I grew up farming and um, in, uh, in Simcoe County, and uh, the challenge with any kind of investment decision is do you build that barn based on a contract or on a, an intention of a buyer? And the problem is, is that, like farming, we can't build this building and, and occupy with tenants who need a higher level support without knowing that we have a reasonable assurance of how we're going to support those tenants for long enough that they will actually be able to achieve the promised stability that, we would, that we're offering them and that we're offering our community. And this is where, you know, at the risk of derailing the conversation, the chicken and the egg, which comes first? We have, to, we have to make a collective commitment as a community that we are going to go to federal and provincial governments together. We can't go to the governments, federal and provincial governments alone saying that Norfolk County will get on board once you, once you get on board. It, it is not right. There's equity issues with this. There's no question that it's, it's imbalanced. But the federal government, CMHC, which has the most financial power, has said they will only co-invest. You can't even really apply unless you have a municipal contribution. And so without a municipal commitment, we really don't even start the project of going to go to these federal and provincial levels of government. If you would like to make a commitment that says, we will conditionally support this pending, you know, proven viability of the project, you know, come the fall or something like that. We anticipate that if, if council approves this deci decision tonight, we will finalize our CMHC application tomorrow, submit that, and press as hard as possible to have a decision from CMHC, uh, their initial review, some sort of decision that says, yes, you're in the queue for funding before summer's out. That would be our goal. If we don't have a decision from council, we, we're still in limbo that we can't apply for that funding until we know where else that municipal investment is coming from. And while we would, are very appreciative of a suggestion for half a million dollars, it is a huge amount of money. It's not adequate enough to actually bridge the budget that then CMHC can say that's a viable proposal. If we can find some other way to bridge the, the 250000 a year or the five million up front, however we want to call it, we don't really care how we break it up. But somehow we have, to mat we have to fit that piece into the budget for the other levels of government to see that the project is viable. Councillor Huffman. 
Thank you, Deputy Mayor Martin. Um, I'm sure you've probably gathered by now speaking to me is like speaking to the choir. So I, I mean, I, I get this. Um, when I started here in December, I do recall having a conversation with one of my colleagues and I said that I probably, no matter how long I'm on council, I will never be an expert on a drainage report. Um, not that I don't want to try and learn and not that I'm, you know, going to put my, my effort into it, but that's not going to be my wheelhouse. This is my wheelhouse. So I'm respectful of my other councillors' opinions on things that maybe aren't their wheelhouse. I get how the funding works. I, and I've equated this to many people in layman's terms that um, it's like having a co-signer. It's like having a guarantor. I'm going to have to guarantor for my youngest son in a couple of weeks so he can rent an apartment. He's going to pay the rent, but they need to know that someone else is there in case something happens. So again, um, and I want to reiterate to all of my colleagues here at the table, is that one of the, so the top social determinants of health is housing. If individuals don't have housing, they don't have anything. And it, it's difficult to, to move forward. There's no, there is difficult to access services, stability. You know, there's certain um, benefits you can't get if you don't have a, an address. So I just implore upon my colleagues to, to look at this and know that the individuals at Indwell, and I've, I've been, understood the process from the beginning in terms of how the funding works. So I don't think that there was anything, um, you know, remiss in that. It was very clear to me how, how the process worked. Um, but I, again, and I, I started with one and I'm going to finish with another, um, two comments, one to a fellow colleague earlier, Mr. Uh, Councillor Columbus, politician is also someone who learns and who has vision. You don't have to change your mind to be a good politician. And we acknowledge a strong community is an accessible community where no one is left behind. We will be active in advocacy and innovative thinking to address the needs of our vulnerable customers and residents. Again, as a reminder, that is number six on our council's guiding principles. Uh, next up, Mayor Chop, questions? Uh, thank you, Deputy Mayor Martin. <clears throat> um, I just want some, some clarification here because I, I think there's still some confusion. I understand the, the idea behind we need to make a contribution. Um, I don't know where the $250,000 number comes. That's, that's a very large contribution as opposed to making some contribution. But when Councillor Taylor is speaking about Oxford, and that keeps being the example that's coming up, we are accessing currently all those same buckets as Oxford. It's not that we're not tapping into those provincial resources. We are. It's just that they're all being used up on other projects in Norfolk. So we keep talking about this ability to get funding to cover the 250000 but all the buckets that are out there, it's already been said, are all being used up. Norfolk's getting them. So it's where are the new buckets? And until we know that there's new buckets, I guess that's, you know, if the buckets were there, we would know there that you would tell us that there's this and there's this and there's this in the future. But we're, we keep talking about Oxford's buckets and we have Oxford's buckets. Through you, Deputy Chair. I mean, if I knew where all the buckets were, we wouldn't be having this conversation. This is the problem that we are all in collectively. <laughs> Today, $6 million was announced for after-school math programs. That was not a bucket that was out there that people could apply to. But our, our provincial government has stated priorities around affordable housing, around mental health support, around ending hallway health care, around uh, economic development, around being open for business. They have many priorities which resonate very deeply with members and residents of Norfolk County and with the needs of Norfolk County. How do we tap into the priorities of our provincial government in a way which they can be successful, which our representatives can be successful, and which we as a community can be successful? Finding the buckets that aren't on the front step. These are complex times politically. We know that. These are complex times for our province financially. Um, but we know that as a community, we also face incredible challenges. Councillor Rabbits, I know, is a, an HR professional at a large employer. 
I was talking to uh, the mayor of Brant yesterday or that last week, who said that one employer in their in their county has 300 unmet jobs, 300 unmet jobs with one employer because they don't have housing. These are solutions. We are open for business as a province, but we don't have the places for people to live. And I believe that the solutions that we can create in Norfolk County can be an inspiration across SCORE, across Southern Ontario, and indeed across the province. And that attracts provincial attention. We know that, without being too candid, we've often said governments don't know how to be creative. They know how to fund things. And I wasn't including you in that when we made that up. But the problem is, is that governments have lots of competing priorities, but they want to make sure that they're putting their money into the most effective thing. And the thing is that the creativity is the hard part of figuring out complex equations, complex circumstances, complex business models that actually will be sustainable. And we believe that our track record is exemplary when it comes to creating those kinds of business plans that work for the community for the long term. And I think that this is where it's actually about inventing new buckets that we then say, look, at, here's a bucket to be filled. Please fill this. And that that kind of opportunity exists for us as Norfolk County. And it's, it's, it, that's the reality. So you made a comment earlier, though. I can't remember how uh, your analogy with buying the farm and kind of needing the plans in place ahead of time. I mean, this is also, you know, you said you were approached by staff. Was there a commitment that was promised at some point? So this, to you, Madam Chair, um, this conversation began in Norfolk County with the BIA, with economic development, um, and with our neighbors in downtown Simcoe uh, last August. It was explicitly stated that there was no commitment of council because we were uh, in an election season. So we did not, we did not, uh, we did not count on a commitment from council from the council that was in place. Obviously, we have a new council in place. We did count on the solidness of our track record, on our business plan, and our uh, strong working relationship with county staff to work through the complexities of, of a very difficult project, of a very difficult pro program, of a very difficult scenario of moving everybody out of the building who was there and stopping the entrenched drug culture. That's what we counted on. We didn't count on a commitment from okay so there was no promise there made was no promise. at that point so um again so just like kind of a short because i've got a few questions but why was this never raised previously in all of the presentations if there was an understanding that you were going to need funding from us in order to be able to f find new uncreated buckets from the government why was this never raised before I believe that we, we didn't raise a specific dollar request before because we did not know what, was, what would the actual dollar request be. Through the process, we knew that there would be a request to council. So perhaps we were overly oblique in saying, you know, we will be coming to you for something. Maybe that was too ambiguous. Okay. I, um, yeah, I don't remember that part. And, and part of this whole, you know, having plans in place before you, you know, having a building and moving forward given that you guys have done this before and you understand you know the the way that funding is received and so on and and i've heard a couple times about it being a complicated business plan that there would have been some knowledge before in all of those yep. previous presentations and i feel personally i feel a little bit blindsided by it because i actually heard the rumors through the community before it ever even came to council and that troubles me a little bit, that there were people that knew about this before kind of it came to us. Um, the other piece you talk about is how do we transform more projects like this? And that goes back to my original concerns with is this, you know, is this the lead to more projects like this in Norfolk and more us in the future? That concerns me. Um, there's also this idea of the first presentation, unfortunately, I, I wasn't here last week, but you actually made a distinction in the presentation between, you said this is not social housing, this is affordable housing. But now, um, to my understanding, you corrected that last week and you, it's, it was a new term, it wasn't affordable because I think we all realized that at 2600 a month, a unit, that wouldn't be deemed affordable housing. Um, so, again, I just... 
I, I don't know where this kind of where this stops and and governments don't know how this is my final point I guess governments don't know how to be creative like you had just said I was also troubled last week when I read the report and this council went through a lot to put aside that million dollars for the council approved initiative fund and um, that was for us to be creative there's some different views around the table it was to go into the reserve because when we often speak about our roads reserves they, they don't actually exist they're uh, in the hole by 20 million dollars um, we're set to have a balloon principal payment of 19 million we just saw uh, in um, in 2020 uh, we issued to benchers to cut down ash trees recently and when this council set aside the millions so whether it was for the reserves or it was for a council approved initiative fund I just that also bothers me that it was just an immediate well this is easy take 500,000 from there because that that wasn't the idea behind that when we did this and that fund is for council to go and and come up with ideas and make presentations on um, so that's just again I wish I could go with you first and we could see about talking to the government and seeing what those options are and seeing if there's a way for the money to flow directly to you um, because of the need for this type of housing that will benefit others within the province not just in Norfolk County and we know in you know large urban centers now I mean it's it's unaffordable to build something like this I think in the future so again I'm more than willing to do whatever else I, I can and, and to continue to support with, with the uh, development grants, with waiving building permits, with tax incentives, you know. Mike? May, may I do respond? So it's complicated to, uh, it's complicated to negotiate in this sort of environment, as you can imagine. Our goal is to make the lives of people in Norfolk County uh, as successful as possible. People who are on the very margins due to mental health and addiction issues, people who are struggling to keep down a full-time job and pay rent, people who are doing well um, and want their businesses to, to succeed. That's our goal. I'm not sure how to get, I'm not sure how to get to a yes with council in the sense of, um, we believe that our proposal is a strong and, and, and robust and resilient proposal that will never end up costing the county $250,000 a year for 20 years. I believe that we can cut that back. I believe that we can reduce it in, in multiple different ways and I believe that we can do that by working together. I know that we can't apply to CMHC without, without a commitment from council because we don't have the co-investor. And I'm not sure how to get to a to enough of a yes that we can go to them with confidence that says, um, you know, this is a guarantor or some sort of relationship that says worst case scenario will will be there, best case scenario we go together and we raise the money by the end of the summer. That's I don't know how to get between a, a, a no tonight, which means we can't apply to CMHC, and a yes tonight, which leaves you feeling that you're on the hook for the whole thing. CMHC is but one bucket, though, right? CMHC so is... You're talking about... You've just been talking about creating new buckets with the government. It is but one bucket, but it is the national housing strategy. It is $40 billion nationally. The CMHC is having a hard time getting at the door. That represents up to 40% of capital for free. And up, and up, and the re up to $6 million, $6.5 million, I believe, is the total budget we want to get from CMHC of extremely low-cost financing. Without CMHC... Without CMHC, we do not have a project. Now, that's so, not one of the buckets that's going to come back to Norfolk County, though, is it? It's one of the buckets that... It's going, to, it's going to change your financing. It's one of the buckets that will change some of the financing and impact the Norfolk County request. The more we can get from CMHC, if we can get 30% or 40%, that makes a big difference as a grant. If we can get the financing to be as low as possible, that makes it, the, the ask change. So we need to look at those numbers together but what the difference would be but without cmhc we don't have a project councillor rabbits thank you deputy mayor martin and through you um 
I guess it's only taken about nine months, and I never thought I'd be doing this, but I guess I'm going to take us on a little bit of a history lesson, as was known by some of our former Ward 5 uh, representatives that have been known to do. Um, the Norfolk Inn, what has happened to this property? How did we get here? Ten years of neglect, absentee landlords not paying their taxes, I believe $170,000 was owing uh, when you assumed the property. I know that there was leaking faucets from the ceiling all the way to the ground floor for a decade, and the taps have just been turned off. Thank you for that. Um, the private sector had an opportunity to develop this property. It went up for tax sales, everyone was suing each other, and there were squalid living conditions in, in this area in our town. And uh, if we were to allow the private sector to continue doing this, there's no reason in my mind that this pattern of behavior would not persist and we have another absentee landlord, squalid living conditions, and a blight on our downtown. Um, I believe that the private sector has dropped the ball in this regard, and this is what we could expect uh, should this project not come through to fruition. Uh, the public sector, we don't have an ability uh, to take this on ourselves, and therefore we do need a community partner. Uh, we've received in our packages a number of different uh, support from community members, business owners, volunteers. We have church groups, both uh, institutional and uh, non-denominational, not-for-profits. We have representatives of uh, Simco BIA, Chambers of Commerce, all voicing support for this project. And I would be remiss if I did not um, reiterate how much support we have gotten for this revitalization effort in our downtown. You continue to uh, have my support uh, for this project for those reasons. I'm willing to give this a shot and see uh, what the next couple years look like in terms of that $250,000 commitment, I believe, and I have faith that we can bring that down and we'll never find out uh, what we could have done if we don't uh, make the investment and, and take the chance on Inwell and take the chance on our uh, downtown. And so that's where we've come from and here is where we are now. Um, I do know that uh, I had asked in our last discussion on July the 2nd for an incremental leap of faith and we had uh, also a contribution agreement uh, that in the event that the property was sold Norfolk County would be listed on title, uh, protect the investment uh, in our downtown. I imagine that if the project doesn't come through to fruition and say the building is uh, renovated and developed, uh, that Indwell wouldn't be able to uh, take the Norfolk in with them uh, to another municipality or, or, or what have you. The investment is going to stay in our downtown. With regards to the comments about different buckets and levels of funding, we pay all kinds of taxes to Queen's Park in Toronto. Um, we pay all kinds of taxes to Ottawa, and the legislature there, those tax monies go outside of our municipality and give that money to some other municipality. This is our opportunity to get some of those monies spent back here in Norfolk. We pay all kinds of taxes. Norfolk County Council, municipality, has the most punitive tax, a property tax. And other levels of government enjoy uh, many different levels of taxation that are much less uh, punitive. Uh, and disruptive in our lives, and many of them are discretionary as well, those taxes that we pay. Those monies go outside of our municipality, we never see a dime back. Indwell has provided us an opportunity to get some of those monies back from the province and from our federal government through advocacy. So those are my comments. I don't know if you wanted to respond, uh, Graham, to what I have said. I just wanted to make sure that I made my position well known and that I do continue to support uh, this project moving forward. I would just say we fully concur with your assessment and appreciate your support. Councillor Michelli. Thank you, Madam Deputy Mayor. Um, I, I was going to go through much of the same history lesson that Councillor Rabbits went through, and he did it so well, so I'm not going to. Um, but I just, uh, I just want to remind everybody just that question, which uh, I think uh, um, reinforces what Councillor Rabbits said, to try to imagine if this project doesn't go forward, what that place looks like. Um, the, you know, a lot of people have mentioned to me, oh, someone, a private interest could buy that and develop it and make it really something good. Well, history has shown that that has not happened. And in fact, before Indwell came along, private investors were not lining up to buy that place. Why? Because it was way too much work. Indwell has done the, the lead work on it, um, you know, just finding places and, and evicting some of the tenants there was a very difficult job. And um, even though now this proposal, if we go forward, 
we're going to be taking very, very tentative steps forward that you know, we're not too sure about, because I share all of the concerns that have been brought up, but I certainly prefer that tentative, as Councillor Rabbits mentioned, leap of faith, than going backwards and heaven forbid that we should ever end up with what we started with. Thank you. Councillor Columbus. Thank you, Deputy Mayor Martin. Uh, contrary to what Councillor Huffman getting from the public, I was getting things the opposite way. People did not want their tax dollars used to support this redevelopment project. And that's what I was receiving. Anyway, I just wanted to, from a Norfolk County position, I cannot see how there's any economic sense to this request. You've got 32 units that are going to be there, subsidized at $7,800 per year to house 32 residents. They will be, that's $650 per unit, the way I understand it. So really what's in it, like from a taxpayer's point of view, that seems, it some, seems like a freebie, but where do you see this in, in your position? Like it seems like a gravy train here to subsidize each unit at 650 a month. And that's what people are upset about. Through you, Deputy Mayor, I think one of the one of the challenges we routinely experience is that people are not actually familiar with the current costs of construction. That that is something that impacts every developer, uh, every home builder, every person looking to do renovations. Um, the cost to do renovations and construction today is very very expensive. Years ago, six hundred fifty dollars would cover the cost full of co full cost of an apartment on the market for market costs. Today, that's not the case. So the challenge, and, I, and we, do, we do recognize that we're taxpayers too, and we want to see our dollars stretched as far as possible. So um, there is a sense within the community that there are a lot of people hurting, there are a lot of people to be helped. And whether that's uh, the person I was talking to across the street who said, you know, my daughter who's the addict gets all the attention, but how am I supposed to look after my grandkid? That's a real issue. Uh, and we need to talk about solutions for her sometime too, but I don't think that we can answer everybody's fear that somebody's getting something while I'm not getting something. Um, that's a much larger, more complicated question than, than I think we can deal with in this, pro this proposal. Councillor Taylor. Thank you, Deputy Mayor Martin. Um, I think it's incredibly important to rem remember that when given a week to come up with options, the collective minds of Indwell and Norfolk County staff came up with an option that allowed us to be six years levy free that was using the OFI funding and not the council initiative bucket. Um, I was just wondering if Heidi would be able to come explain how that the OFI funding would work to allow us to get six years levy free. Thank you, uh, Deputy Mayor Martin. Through you to Councillor Taylor. The, the staff report, um, in the staff report, uh, we have provided a number of options for Council's consideration um, to get to the number that is contained within the report. Should Council choose not to use all of the options, such as the Council Initiative Reserve, um, then certainly that, that would change the bottom line. Uh, the OFI funding, or the Ontario Priority Housing Initiative funding, is the newest uh, federal and provincial uh, funding bucket that it has, is the next iteration of our affordable housing funding. So in this investment plan that Council is going to see after the summer recess, staff are suggesting a commitment of $250,000 that would cover the first year of the um, the contribution agreement as is stated in the, the staff report. The following two years of the OFI that we have a planning, for which we have a planning allocation, on page five of the staff report, you'll see that our planning allocation for those next two years is greater than 
250,000. So council could choose to tap into that funding pot to cover part or all of, of the annual contribution. Um, I, if I am you know, misrepresenting, I will ask the treasurer to come up and assist me as well uh, because he contributed greatly to this report. Uh, another suggestion that is contained within the report to get to that, that six years is um, a continuation of uh, a previous commitment that a previous council made to Norfolk General Hospital that will end after 10 years. It's $500,000 a year for 10 years. Um, the suggestion, again, it's just a suggestion, was that once that grant to Norfolk General Hospital is, is finished, that half of that, or $250,000, could be uh, reinvested in, into the Norfolk Inn. In terms of the homelessness funding, um, we have talked about uh, around the council table, I believe it was the, the first affordable housing report that we brought forward. We did talk about the homelessness prevention funding and I believe I indicated that this housing community does meet the definition of housing with related supports under the guidelines for the Community Homelessness Prevention Initiative. That is how we fund the operating grant at Hambleton Hall. Um, our existing homelessness funding with all of the existing programs is currently committed. However, we do know that our next year's planning allocation is, is at least $100,000 more than what we have this year. So um, that is also a pot of money that we could look at to help fund part or all of the annual contribution. Um. I do have Mayor Chop next, but uh, while I have you here, Heidi, the chippy funding, we did speak about that last week. Could you very quickly just touch on that again? Certainly. So CHIPI stands for the Community Homelessness Prevention Initiative. It is 100% provincial funding that comes to uh, Haldeman and Norfolk from the Ministry of Municipal Affairs and Housing. There are um, four service components emergency shelter solutions, which is where we fund our emergency housing program, uh, supports and services and homeless prevention, where we fund our housing stabilization bank and our housing support program, and housing with related supports, which is where we fund our domiciliary hostels and the contribution to Hamilton Hall. Thank you. Mayor Chop. Um, actually, well, I'll just jump back to something else, but the Ontario Priorities... Um, housing initiative money that you're talking about using for this that is meant to be for affordable housing projects is it not to increase housing supply yes that's correct so if we take it all and we use it on 32 rooms we're not going to be able to use that money to increase the housing supply the affordable housing supply in Norfolk County which we know there is also a significant need so Deputy Mayor, through you to, to Mayor Chop, our first year uh, allocation, so for the 2019-20 allocation for the OFI, we have $750,000. And so staff are bringing forward an investment plan that has more investment than just the Norfolk Inn at an amount of 250000 Okay, I, I'll let Heidi finish and then I have a couple other... Um you're, you're okay to go ahead there. I Mayor just Chuck. wanted to make sort of just when Councillor Rabbits had said uh, members of the BIA and store owners um, all in support. Um, I think we just received a letter yesterday from members of the BIA as well that were not in support of this. So I think it's a mixed and I talked to a number of store owners across from the Norfolk Inn that are also not in support. A number that are, but a number that aren't as well. Thank you. To, um, but uh, to clarify, I did not say that all were in support. Okay. I said we received... Um, <laughs> support from members of those organizations and in fairness I did receive also some comments that were against and I found them to be actually quite crass and you'll find that they aren't included in our public information uh, package likely because the content of uh, those that were disparaging and well in this project um, would be very damaging to those individuals uh, character and in their integrity uh, with some of the comments that they had made that I found to be uh, very offensive and very hurtful as well. 
Well, I think um, Les Anderson, who is a new board, BIA board member, I thought he wrote a very insightful uh, email yesterday um, that was not in, in support, but with very sort of salient points that he articulated. Um, also by saying that, you know, he too believed that everyone deserves to have reasonable housing accommodations, particularly our most vulnerable and senior residents, but he believed there were better opportunities for Norfolk County to achieve this without making a commitment of $5 million on our tax levy. Um, the only other piece I wanted to address was uh, the debate that was going on in terms of nobody having picked up this property uh, previously. I think that, I think Simcoe really is starting to change and I personally, I think, I, I don't want to see you guys not build this. I still want to find a way to help you do this. But the suggestion that the Norfolk Inn is going to go back to what it was or be sold to a slumlord, I truly do not believe that that is in the cards. I think that it is uh, a unique piece of real estate and the, heart, the heavy lifting that needed to be done that most people don't, didn't want to do uh, in terms of the relocations and so on, which is why a lot of people wouldn't have touched that building previously. Now you guys, um, you have gone and done that. So I don't see it personally becoming a slumlord situation. Uh, again, I think that it's a valuable piece of real estate um, in downtown Simcoe that somebody would like, be likely to pick up. Councillor Michelli. Thank you, <clears throat> Madam Deputy Mayor. I, I did want to just um, <clears throat> have uh, Graham confirm, um, when we discussed this, uh, I believe it was a, a week ago, um, that there was <clears throat> the expectation that when this project was up and running, that it would be staffed by local Norfolk employees so that we would get the economic benefit of that. Um, and, and am I still correct in, in that assumption? Through you, Deputy Mayor. Our, our, our goal 